Nation. Yes. Yes. What's good, family? I see my people in the building, man. My fault about switching up the time frame. That was on me. That was not on Stu. That was on me. You know, every show is always 10 o'clock Eastern time. I accidentally put the wrong time. So my apologies to the nation and everybody that was in the comment section. Like, what the fuck is Graf doing? Trust me. Every show's usually going to be the same time. But we're here now, man. Stu's actually uh, setting up right now. And we about to get to it. Hey, man. I'm trying to tell y'all right now. This one is going to be very fun. Very fun, man. Stuart Schweiger, I don't think y'all understand. This dude is a real one like us. This shit is barbershop talk, man. Stu is going to talk that shit. This is the perfect platform for him. I just got done telling him that. We're going to have a fucking ball, y'all. Let me tweet this out. If y'all get a chance to, too, man, tweet it out. Put it on your Facebook, man. Let's get the channel heard. Let's get it seen. But how's everybody doing in the comment section? Bass. Been bad. Cool Kev. What's up, my brothers? Let me share this real quick. Let me get it rocking. Let me get it rocking. And we're going to pull up. Oh, man, we got some stories, y'all. Y'all are about to, man, bro. Y'all are about to die, man. We got some Al Davis stories. We got some Drew Brees stories. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Ricky Diaz, why? Introvert, what's up, family? High five. Freddie is in the building. Willie Wayne, I don't need any tums today, man. I got my uh, I got my heartburn medicine, man. So we are lit. <laughs> got me a little tequila. Got me a couple little beers. We gonna talk that shit tonight. Mike Nizer, what's up, brother? Dustin White, my brother, man. Father and son, football fun. Yes, yes. We gonna have some fun, man. I'm looking forward to this one. Give me a second, y'all. Stu, just hit me up. Just seen that. Just seen the message. He should be on in a minute. He's never used StreamYard before, so uh, be patient. But he will be here in a minute. Wipe them feet, man. Hit the subscribe button, man. Dre the goat. Or Dre the great. Jeff Davis. Las Vegas Raiders win, win. We all in the building. Raider Dangerfield. What's up, my brother? Demarcus, as always, he says, my feet is white. Nah, Dre, you the GOAT, brother. You the GOAT. Raiders Gaming, what's up, my brother? <laughs> Let's get to it, man. Let's get to it. Uh, what's good, man? What's on everybody's minds, man? Training camp has been crazy thus far. We went live earlier. Theo Riddick retired abruptly. Uh, that's another guy gone just like that. It seems like everybody in our running back room is, is, is just headed for the hills. A little crazy right now, man. Blazing Roots, what's up, brother? And I, hey, get your comments in the comment section. Um, we are going to answer everything. I got Stu backstage right now. My brother, my brother. Let's get to it, man. Let's let's talk that talk. Stu! Yo! What's up, my brother? Can you hear me? I can. I can. Hey, your man cave is fire, man. You can hear, okay, hold on, wait, wait, let's make sure here, hold up. All right. Why is it, it's like, hold on a second, what the fuck? You're all good, brother, we can see you and we and we can hear you. I know, but why is it, uh, hold on, let's like. Can you see me? I can see you, yeah, I, I don't know, it's like, hold on. Everyone can see in here, okay, all right. Everybody can see you, everybody right now, man, introvert says all right. the goat. Uh, why, why don't I? I'm looking at the straight here, but why is it looking like? Hold on, guys. Let me. Okay, there you is that go. Better? Okay, there better. Okay, okay, go. okay. All right, Perfect. all right. High five, Freddie says the man. You gotta, help, you, gotta, you gotta help me with this stuff, dude. I'm I'm just getting back into social media. I've never really used it like this, so. I got you. I I'm turned forty, going, man. Dude, I turned forty. Uh, June twenty first. Happy forty related, years man. old. I'll be Where thirty eight. The... In January, so I feel you, man. I uh, see. I was gonna say I, I thought you were like thirty. You look young. I'll take that, brother. Thank you very yeah. much, man. Hey, real quick, before we do anything, I want to plug everything that you have going on right now. Um, so, real quick, what, the Instagram first. What is the Instagram? 
Uh, what is my answer? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, that's your that's your yeah, that's your job on that, man. Come on. I think it's I think it's I think it's my butcher, isn't it? Yes, at T H Y. I'm gonna put it in the comment section, y'all. I, I have it on my name to you. Everybody, go follow our brother on Instagram, man. I'm gonna put it on there real quick. Um, Thank what you. else? Thank you. Yeah. Um, I also other than that, I don't. I don't do a whole lot of social media. Um, just, just uh, I just don't have time to do it, you know. So I do the Instagram because I, I wanted to get back on Instagram to get a hold of. That's a great way to get a hold of like your teammates and stuff. That's how you find it because a lot of these guys, guys just disappear, man. And you don't have the right numbers, but you can type in a name and often it pops up and you send a message. So that's one reason I wanted to get back on Instagram and I've I've reconnected with a lot of former teammates. And then I also have YouTube. And um, one thing, as you know, as once you're retired, you got to try to find hobbies. You got to find yeah. hobbies, right? And yeah. I don't golf. I don't gamble. I don't fish. I don't go on guys' weekends. I, you know, uh, I usually just stay in the house, right? You know, and so a little bit of video games, I got into making um, highlight films. So my, my father... Um, back like you know the big old like the camera that was about this big you know you had to walk out with the you know the big ass camera and it yeah yep. took like eight batteries that lasted like five minutes well i have all this old footage and you know eight millimeter and then i have uh stuff that i filmed from purdue i have high school stuff i have a whole bunch of cool media and the thing is is, is like those vhs tapes and stuff man like over time they just deteriorate right yeah. And if there was a fire or something, man, it'd be gone forever. And so what I started to do that I, I got actually, I went and this shows you how old school I am, dude. I I got the uh, the the v, VHS DVD converter, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I take I take the the VHS, right? And here's another thing too. So okay, I, I got a. Got a lot of shit, a lot of stuff on my mind, so I'm kind of all over the place. So let me, I, I'll start off with my, I'll start off with my family. So I have two older brothers, two older sisters. So my mother Carol was married to a man named John Kennelly. Um, they got divorced. They but they had four kids. They got divorced. They ended up passing away when I think I was two. But um, my mom met my father, had me. Then my parents got divorced when I was in third grade. He got remarried to a woman named Leanne who already had three kids. They had my little sister. So I have five brothers and sisters. They're not, we're not from the same mom or dad, but my four older siblings all played sports. My two brothers played football at a, a, a division two school called Northwood University up, up in Michigan. Uh, my father's from South Dakota. He's a country boy, Pierce, South Dakota. Uh, he played at Yankton College. Um, and I'm going to ask, now, there's a connection for the Raiders and Yankton College. You guys know it? You know it? I don't. There, I, there's a certain player that was a was a, a legend for the Raiders that actually played my dad. So when this guy graduated, my dad took his spot at defensive end at okay. Yankton College. See if anybody, I don't know, it's a little trivia question for someone out there, but I, I'll tell you guys what it is later. But uh, So anyways, he played college football. And so my one older brother kept all my stuff. Like when I was little, so I have, I probably won't show you, we'll have a show one time where I just go through and I'll show you like all of my, dude, I have my first football jersey, well, for instance, it was just kind of, which is kind of, let me see, man. So this is my first football helmet and we were black and silver yeah, and I was, a, I was a running back and I loved Bo Jackson. So oh, I, my first number was 34. Yeah. Oh, so anyway. So anyway, well now I gotta hold on. I gotta. I'm gonna show you the jersey real quick. Can you hear me still? You Let's can still go. hear me, right? Let's go. Can you still hear me? You can still I hear me, know. right? Let me yeah. See. So check this out, bro. Look at this. Pat Curtis. Holy there you go. Swagger shit. 34. I even got. Look at. I even got the pants still, dude. So anyways, <laughs> which is just it's you just weird how I to be a Raider, bro. I know, right? I know. So. Um, my older brothers kept all this stuff. So my one brother 
in the 2000s, that's why I went to Purdue from 2003. That's when TiVo came out. You remember when TiVo came out? I was like, uh -huh. you can pause real life TV, like, oh shit, like, dude, like, that's crazy, right? So my brother would pre record all my college games. So I got like, I got like, maybe he, he filmed like 30 or 35 of my college games on VHS. Yeah. So what I've been doing is, here's the thing though, you put it in there and it's like a four hour game while the commercials and you can't yeah. skip around. Yeah. So you got to sit there and watch the whole game, but so I convert it to a DVD and then I got Final Cut Pro and I, I have a, like a digital converter that converts it into a workable file. I put it into uh, Final Cut Pro. I put the highlights in there, the music. I do some of like the, the, the video effects. Let me, let me tell you this real quick, Stu. If you ever need any help with any of this, the nation, man, I'm telling you, we do everything over here, man. If you ever need any help with any any of that stuff, man, let me know. We have a million people that love to just love to support anything Raiders. We can get that going, brother. Hell yeah. Well, also that goes both ways. If there's any way that any or any of the Raider Nation that anything, dude, like I yeah. give out, you'd be amazed at how many things I go out to functions and stuff and talk to youth or talk to coaches, and I give my number out, man, and. You would say, you'd think, you know, I'd have a, no one ever, no one ever calls me, dude. You know what I mean? I, I don't know if they feel weird or what I really think it is, is nowadays people think they know everything. They got it all figured out, right? Like, yeah. I'm like, man, listen, dude, I just, I made it to a certain level that a small percentage can make it to. Ever. And I feel it's my right to give back some of that knowledge, right? Yes. Because yes. there's so many people out there that want to do good, but they never made it to that level. So they're really, they're trying their best, but they're giving the wrong advice. You know what I'm saying? So I'm always like, man. And I just remember, like, back in my day, I'm thinking, yeah, go, I go back to my high school. I, I used to a lot, right, when I lived yeah. back in Michigan. And I come to practice and give my number. I'm thinking, if I was in high school and there was a dude that went to my same high school yes. and he was in the league, and he came back and gave me his number. I'd be calling him every day, like, "Hey, man, what kind of shoes should I wear? Like, what yeah. what kind of cereal yeah. should I eat? Like, what?" Uh, but these kids, they all, you know, I'm good, man. No, yeah, I got it all figured out. But the problem, so here we go. the problem is in our in our era, us growing up, we had OGs. These young guys, bingo, no more, bingo. That's, no the, dude, <laughs> <laughs> that's the dude. That's that's like. That's the thing, like when the OGs come around, you shut your mouth and you're just glad that they're talking to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. dude, like, what, like anything, like, dude, whatever you tell me, I'll do. And like nowadays, like, when I go into a room or any situation, I'm automatically picking out, I consider myself an alpha. Like, that's the type of lifestyle of a football player. The alpha one, the one that, the one that runs stuff, right? Yes. So I'm like, any situation I go into, I'm thinking, if, 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 shit hits the fan, who's the guy that could take me out, right? Like, who's the other biggest dude in here, right? Yeah. And I'm thinking in my head, if I'm picking out the biggest dude, he, I'm probably just going to steer clear of that dude. Like, I'm not really going to come up and say, because he's, you know, he, he just yeah. my ass, right? Yeah. Like, I don't want to, yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking people come up to me, and they say some stuff when I'm, like, going, dude, like, you you know, like, why would you say something like that? But people know it. They're not scared of anybody because they, they think that no one can talk to them, right? So, like, there are certain things, like, dude, you, you, don't, you don't even talk to certain people until they talk to you. Like, let me ask you this real quick. Level. Let me ask you this real quick. Do you ever stop and look at these young kids and say, you know that I, I got an interception off of Brett Favre, right? You know that I almost, hey, 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 listen, you know I almost killed Tony Gonzalez, right? Like, <laughs> like, 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 you have, look, I, you know I'm the leading interception guy at Purdue, right? I play with Drew Brees. Like, like, you, come on. Hey, man. first of all, I'm going to say this, okay? First of all, I had my own radio show, and I've done a lot of interviews, okay? Uh -huh. And what you just did just now showed that you did your research, mm -hmm. and that's good stuff right there, because I've done interviews where, People might come in, right? And they might they might not know who the hell I am. Yes. And and you don't and I don't want to sit here and say, Oh, I did this and I did this and I did this. It's up to the host to say, This is Stuart Schweiger, he played at Purdue, he played for the Raiders, he started yes. this. So people are gonna go, Oh shit, I, okay, I wanna listen to this guy because he might know what the hell he's talking about. 
So that was, I like that you did that. Let me me tell you something. I'm such a real Raider fan. I didn't have to do my homework with any of that. I already know. You know, I, pre- I, no, I, I, pre- I, grew, I, I, pre- I appreciate that. I appreciate yeah. that. I, 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 I respect that. You, and, and I want these young guys to know what I know, to, to, to see what we, because. They don't care. Yeah. They, they, they don't care. They do not care. They, hold on. Hold on. I go on tangent. You know this, right? My, my, for my brain Let's injuries. Go. Let's and my, go. Let's so, go. I want to go back, though. I, the whole thing to restart the, the videography thing was we were talking about my social media. So. I've been putting a lot of cool stuff up on my YouTube. So I have like 80, 90s. I have old commercials of me, Cooper, and Huff. I have, yeah, there you go. Old, old, and that's 2006. So anything you see on there from the Raiders, that's the 2006 season right there. Yes. And it's every play I was involved in. It's not just the good ones. It's every play I was involved in from and that year. Our defense was number three overall defense. Number one passing defense, and I was second in the NFL with 109 tackles, one behind Chris Hope, who had 110. But here's the thing. If you watch that game, you might think it's a highlight. It's every play. So there's maybe four or five plays where I screw up in there. But what's nice is is that that is like that's how we watch the film, and that's like you can just I, – I just want people sometimes to see that because – I don't want to get on my soapbox already in the art. Well, what are we in? 16 minutes in the interview here. But I, I, we didn't get the You're home. notoriety. Talk that shit. You're home. Talk that shit. We, we, we didn't get the notoriety because here's the deal. Our offenses, and I, I loved our offensive players, man. I did. And I'm not, defense had shit games, dude. Don't get me wrong. We didn't play perfect. Yes. But the offense, we just, we could not establish ourselves. As an offense, and defensively, man, like, I'm watching those games, man, and there's some games on there, like, if you go on my YouTube, I'm just telling you, look at the San Francisco game, we went out there, and there's a Frank Gore, I had to make one-on-one tackles on Frank Gore, twice a year against LaDainian Thomason, Larry Johnson, uh, Ronnie Brown, I'm back 15 yards deep in the middle, because Al Davis, we played man-free, dude, that was it, corners are locked down, the strong safety's eight in the box, we couldn't disguise. I'm 15 yards in the middle of the field, so the quarterback knows where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? So he's not going to throw it there. So I can't get interceptions, but you know what? Those running backs, and you know, up front, sometimes those young linebackers, God rest Thomas Howard Soul yes. and Kirk Morrison, who was a great player, yes. but I got to make them right. They, I got to play off them. Yes. And dude, I, I, I can make 11 tackles, but you know what the one one I miss? It, it's a touchdown. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, man, I just, I just I put that up there one because um, I like it. I just you know I like going back and remembering some of that stuff. But two, Dude, I real, share quick, with real, people. real quick, everybody in the chat right now is asking. I don't know if you can read the comments, but uh, shout, oh, out to uh, brother, shout out to my brother Terrence L. He just put your YouTube channel up. Is this is this Stuart? Oh yeah yeah. Uh, is that it? That's got to be it, right? It's that just Stuart right Swagger. Yes, that it's is just it. Stuart Swagger. Everybody, go subscribe to Stu's YouTube right now. Let's. Let's support our I got, I got I got my first football game on there. I got T-ball games. I got I was a gy- dude, I was a gymnast for the first two years. Track star. My- track star. You were the track star. Oh. oh yeah yeah yeah. That was oh no, here, no, here's the other thing. You know, coming out of the Big Ten, um, as a white dude from the Midwest, at six three, two ten, right? Here's an automatic label I get put in as smart guy, right? White kid, smart kid, you know, <laughs> gonna be good, gonna be good in the locker room, right? Good in the yeah. community, but yeah. not that fast, not that athletic, right? That's just, that's just how it is, right? And I had you, I was like, I've always been fast, so, God, I, so I, I'm gonna go we just talk about that. I'm gonna talk about how some of these, how that, how, God damn, I want to talk about that too, being. And we're talking about with, everything. We got nothing but time, the, brother. With the state of America and with you know the, the 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 racial stuff that's going on, man, I I I see it from a different perspective because I was always the only white guy in the room, right? I I played a black position, and I mean there weren't a lot of white coaches or or white players around me, so automatically if 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 you take me and this is this is God honest truth in high school. You take me, and you take a black guy, same height, same weight, 
Yeah. Maybe maybe even a little bit slower. I may have better stats, all this stuff, but automatically he's he's faster, he's a better athlete, we're gonna take this dude. That's yeah. just how so I had I had to constantly prove how fast I was. So I remember going so let me retract. In high school I won the hundred meter dash state championship. Uh, yes. which is on there, yes you look at my junior year, first white guy to win it since nineteen fifty six. And I set a state record. It was ten six oh electric, which would be a ten three two handheld. But I had to beat Charles Rogers. And I encourage everybody to I, I to talk to look up Charles Rogers. He's from Monster. Saginaw. Monster. He we battled in uh, football, basketball, and track from when we were fifteen years old up until at Michigan State. So there's no me without Chuck. And I'm telling you, this the whole entire town, we would have a dual track meet. You're talking about a dual track meet on a Wednesday, middle of the week. We would have 6,000 people to come watch me and him battle against each other. You'd have Barry Alvarez in the stands, Joe Tiller in the stands, Nick Saban in the stands, uh, Lloyd Carr in the stands, right? And it was like, Black versus white. I mean, it was like, dude, like it brought a city together, man. And yeah. I played, I played with Tim Brown and Jerry Rice and Randy oh, Moss and Charles yeah. Woodson and great athletes. Charles, Charles Rogers is the best natural athlete I've ever seen in my life. Could do I anything. I thought he was going to be the next big thing. I, I could, could do it. Could do anything. He won the Whitnikoff Award. Second, number two pick to Detroit. His yes. first game, he had two intercept or two two touchdowns, broke his collarbone. Yes. Right? Out the whole year. You can't you can't rehab it, nothing. Okay? Mm-hmm. Well now, during that time, you know, he he likes to smoke a little marijuana, right? He's twenty years old with fifteen million dollars in his bank account. He's ninety miles from Saginaw where we grew up. He's yeah. seventy miles from Michigan State. He's only got to report in every Tuesday. Like he just yeah. he got caught. So he got put in the program, right? And once you're in the yeah. program, it's it tough, right? So then the next year, rehabs it, gets out of gets out of the program, and and they were playing. Um, it was the beginning of the season, and it, they just had like the little shells, like it wasn't shoulder pads, it was yes. shells. I remember? And he he beat Dre Bly on a on a pass route. Well, the next play, Dre Bly got mad, so Dre Bly like pushed him. He fell, broke his collarbone again. Then. Back in the pro, didn't have to do it, you know, didn't have to see anyone, got busted again. Well, then he got put on probation, which now, marijuana is legal anyways, right? Yeah, pretty much everywhere. So then, guy gets labeled a bust, and because of that, and the media and the fans, he was so embarrassed. He was so, he was so devastated by that, because he was, the, again, this guy did shit no one could do. And then he's like, for them to call me a bust, right? Um, long story short, he ended up passing away two years ago because of his, yeah. and, and me and him had the same struggles, man. Like the same, like this, I mean, we come from the, if, when I had that, when I had issues with stuff, I, I, I might be able to talk to you about some things, but other things you're not going to understand because you're just, nothing to get you, but you weren't at that level. So I might say yes. something and you're going, I don't, I can't relate to you on that, Stuart. Yes. But, but again, like I said, me and Chuck, we could call each other and just, we knew like, dude, I know, I, I know exactly what you're talking about, man. So, anyway, he passed. But what I'm saying is, is, and I go again, I go back to what I was talking about, me being fast and the weight label of a it's white dude good. or whatever. Um, my junior year, I beat him in, in state championship. And that would be like a white dude beat Usain Bolt. You'd be like, what the, like, what the yeah. fuck? Like, what just happened here, right? Yeah. So, if I raced him 100 times, that day, I just, it just worked out. Because we he beat me, you know, I think seven times. It was always close. But I got him at one time. And after that, it, it solidified me as being a, a top recruit in the country. You know what's so funny? When you beat him that one time, I seen him in an interview with the news reporter. What do you say? What do you say? He, he, was, he, he was like, he got that. Like, like he, he got that. Like, you know, I, I can't even be mad. He, he was smiling. He's, he's the coolest dude you ever met in your life, dude. And that, that, just, that just shows you how classy he was. He says, yes. he, goes, he goes, he got off the block better than me. He goes, uh, uh, hey, what he's saying? He says, he deserved it. He deserved yeah. it. He won. Yeah. And then we, yeah. we, we partied that night together, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, we just, we had respect. But so, so what I'm saying is, is that whole, so I, I had, I had to basically do the impossible for anybody to think I was fast, okay? okay. Then I go to Purdue, have my career. So then I had the NFL Combine, right? And in the evenings, you talk with coaches, our teams, 
right? Third rounder, third rounder, third rounder, third rounder pick third in that in that third, right? I was I was the third pick in the third round. Okay. There so I I I actually, I actually queued up here. I actually queued up the uh, the combine off my YouTube page, which has my forty and all that stuff. So. I actually graded out at a, like I had like a ninety two percent grading view. Like I I was always good at testing. Yes. Thirty eight and a half inch vertical, four four forty. Uh I ran the fastest L shuttle there. I had a oh a three three five one or oh, three nine one uh five ten five um and I was two eighteen at three, six foot three, right? So well so we're I'm sitting there talking to Steve Mariucci and I don't want to talk bad about a guy, but no, no, no. We're gonna do that. You t tell. I want to know because I've heard some stories about Moose too. So, so go ahead. I think he's. I, I think he's a clown. I, I, I think you know, and, and the reason I say that too because he used to coach like Eastern and West Shrine games and stuff. You know, when yeah. when you and these college kids, dude, those college kids, you want to be around NFL coaches because you want to learn some shit. You want to like, dude, this I'm, this is huge for me. And then he just seemed like he was always just out there just kind of, oh, yeah, just doing this and not really. I'm like, dude, like, this isn't a joke to these kids, man. Like, you can go out there and just fuck around. But I'm like, you know, just like, I didn't like that. Like, like yeah. coach, you like you're supposed to coach. So we're in this meeting. And, and when you go to these meetings, like, literally, I'm sitting in a chair. And they clear out a hotel room. And it's like a, it's like a, a bench. And it's all the whole coaches, the, the GM, the president. 15 people and you're just sitting like this and they're just bow, bow, like, you know, firing off questions, do this or whatever, right? So at the end, um, well, first of all, he just brought up my arrest from Purdue, which it was, none of it was my fault, obviously, you know that, just drink, stupid drinking stuff, college kid shit. I'm like, is this really something that we need to be talking about? Then he says, hey, Stu, um, you're gonna, you're gonna, you, you think you, 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 know, you think you're gonna break a four six tomorrow? And I went. Well, this, is, this is still Steve, Steve Mariucci, right? This is Steve Mariucci. Okay. I'm sitting there He goes, you think you, you, you think you can break a four six tomorrow? And I, I go, I'm like, are you, are you talking to me? Or are you talking to somebody else? Because I was like, I, I, I haven't ran a four <laughs> six since I was in sixth grade. But if you look at, so if you think about this though, this is the same guy, right? Steve Mariucci, the same guy, just the year before. Drafted Charles Rogers number two overall. I beat Charles Rogers, and he didn't even no like clue. no clue, no clue. I'm thinking, what the who? What the what, what are you guys doing, man? You, like you talk about all this research you do before the combine, but maybe just again, I'm a tall white dude, so I'm not going to be fast. So why the hell do we start talking about that, anyways, man? Okay, so anyway, so hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, real quick, real quick, real quick. Because every there's a million talking about? Oh, there's a, okay. no, 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 no. I, I told him he knows about Mary Uchi because Emmerich oh. right there is actually, he's actually a Niner fan. That's 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 why I, I made sure to re to re say to re say that because he needed to hear that. Well, see, see, his name Mary Uchi, the Michigan guy. He's from Michigan. He's from the UP. Uh -huh. And I love you know I like he's boys with um with um uh the head coach at Tom Izzo, the basketball coach at Michigan. Yes. But, I just didn't like his his jolly golly just kind of fuck around approach, man. I didn't like. I just didn't like that, you know. So, hold on, I want to get some questions in real quick because everybody's firing them off like crazy. Yeah, dude, you got. I get going, dude. Just just cut no, me I'm off, still, dude. Stu, Stu, I'm telling you, bro. This is the channel for you because that's what the fuck we do over here. All right, look. Favorite Al Davis story. <laughs> oh. I know there's a lot of them. I, I'll, I'll give you one. I'll give you a top one, and I'm going to give one because we're, I'm going to come back on the show, and every time I'll, I'll tell a story every time. Perfect. There we go. Story time with Stu. That's going to be a segment. I'll do it. Well, here's the, I'll tell you this. Here's the other reason I like getting this stuff documented like this is because as we get older, man, I forget some of this stuff. Like I, I'm like, I'll tell a story, and I'm like, did that? Am I, and I got to call my buddies like, hey, did that really happen? But like, no, I did because you're like, you know, sometimes you just don't know if it was a bet, like a dream or a real memory. So I like to get yeah. stuff documented while I'm still functioning here. Um, <laughs> so actually, okay. So this picture here, can you guys see that? I love it. Okay. Fire. So this was this was the mini camp six days after the draft. So right, so I get drafted on Saturday. 
They fly me out Thursday, and I'm, you know, literally five days ago, I was just some college dude to I'm playing Garden Jerry Rice and trying to stop a pass from Tim uh, from Rich Gannon and shit like six days later, right? Yeah. So this was the end of the three day mini camp, and I ended the mini camp. I picked off. It was either Terry Collins or Rich Gannon at the end. Oh no, maybe you know what? Might have been either T. Martin or uh, maybe uh, Tiasa Sopo. Anyways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you know, Al Davis goes to every practice. He, I'm sure you guys know that, right? And yeah. this was back when he could still walk himself, you know? Yes. So <laughs> I just, he'd be out there and he'd just be, and you know, he, he had the towel and he'd, you know, do this. Let's go. He's, he's out, you know, just coaching guys up and cheering. And I was like, damn, okay. You know, cussing people out. What the fuck you do? You know, like this. And he says, Swagger. Swagger, come over here. And I'm going, oh, shit. I'm like, bro, you going to cut me? You know, or I don't, you know, whatever. I'm like, anytime you talk to your boss, it's always kind of uncomfortable, man. Yeah. So, and I, I, my agent had told me Al every year has a guy. That's like his guy. Yes. That, and from my understanding, I was, you know, I was his guy, right? So he calls me over and he says, he goes, Swagger, he goes, that ball always just seems to find your hands. And I said, that's actually kind of, that sounded kind of weird, but you know what I'm saying. So uh, I said, yes, I said, I said, I said, uh, I said, I said, Mr. Davis, actually, it was Rod Woodson who gave me a little pointer on a route combination. And that's, again, that's why he was so great. He said, Stu, if you, if you see the tight end go 10 yards and do a dig and, th- and that receiver cuts out at five, so when I saw the receiver cut in at five, I knew the tight end was going to do a dig. I yeah. sat on it and picked it off. So he, so I, he has me by the shoulder, and, you know, we, we walk into the locker room, right? So a friend of mine, I gave, a, I gave this picture to him, and he said, Stu, would you get – and I signed it for him. He said, would you and, and see if Al Davis would sign it? I'm thinking, well, I, I, I'll, go, I'll, go, I'll go see, right? You know, this, I think this was during – this was in the offseason after my rookie year, okay? And I remember his secretary is fudgy. I think it's, I think she's still the secretary up there. So I go up to the second one. Because there's just some parts of the, 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 like the facility you just don't go into, right? It's like, yes. yeah, that's, that's, I don't want to get stuck in a conversation with like a GM or it's just, you know, yeah, 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 it's yeah. You're clear of that shit. So I go over to that part of where, where Al and Dave, I didn't even know if he had an office there or not, right? So I go up and, you know, there's a secretary's desk where Fudgy's at. And I said, Fudgy, I said, I said, Alan. She says, well, yeah, he's in. I said, you think, I said, I got, a, I got this picture. And I said, you think we can sign this? You know, I could, you don't know, these guys are busy as hell. And sometimes, you know, they do the Al Davis, man. He can be like, Fuck it, I got too much shit to do, man, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so she like calls and said, hey, Stuart Swagger would like to come in. And, and he, I heard him say, send him in. So he had, you know, these big double doors. I walk in and his office is probably about as big as his basement, right? And he's at the way at the back. All the carpet, pure white. The walls and ceilings, pure white. Everything else is black. So it's just the silver like trim. And then behind him are the Super Bowl trophies. And he's just sitting there with his, you know, his Raiders starter jacket or whatever. And he's got his glasses. And I walk in and I'm just kind of going. He's like, he's like this and he says, he said, Stuart Swagger, he says, uh, Saginaw Heritage High School, he says, uh, the 1999 Saginaw Valley League MVP, 1,600 rushing yards, 26 rushing touchdowns, won the 100-meter dash, and I think you have the rebound record at your high school, don't you? I'm going, holy fuck. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's, that's true, yeah. And I sat down, and we just chatted it up, dude. I mean, I, just, I was just basically like, Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. I mean, but that's how, that's like, I was like, dude, this dude, like, he's, he's so passionate oh about it. God. Like he, I mean, I know people always kind of gave him like he's too involved. Um, but that just shows you like, I'm thinking this guy is damn out. I think about the players, the legend that, the but the players that he's been around yes. and he's sitting I come into his office and he's talking about my stats. So what it shows you, 
number one, he's a football fan, dude. Like he just yes. he enjoys football, right? Hey, but still, he still, goes, you know, you, you know, one thing that I need to tell you real quick. Never question yourself, brother. Al Davis broke down to you your high school stats. <laughs> Never, never in life question anything that you have going on, who you are, bruh. You are a goat. If Al Davis breaks down your no, life, no, that's no, no, crazy. That's crazy. No, bro. no, no. And I will. That's my last Al Davis story. And here's the thing: we had a great relationship, dude. We did. We my whole career. And then I'll talk about the the. I don't the the, the 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 breakdown of that fourth year for me and why I left and what happened and yeah. I I wish I wish I would have communicated with Al a little bit better um, but I was young you know I was feeling myself um, no one was gonna tell me what I was gonna do you know and the one I don't have I don't have I don't live with regrets I don't live with regrets at all every decision I made bad or good has brought me to this conversation with you where I'm supposed to be at, right? Yes, but there are a couple of things I, I wish I could not go back and change, but I wish I could have talked to the person about it. And I wish before Al passed, I wish I could have just had a conversation with them. What happened, Stu? You good? Yeah. I love it, brother. I love it. This is, a. Hey. Hey, Al is emotional for all of us, brother. So I love it, man. Let that shit out. The nation is here. We supporting you. Trust and believe, brother. No judgment over here, King. At all, brother. I love it. This lets me know how passionate you are about this shit. So, brother, let it out, man. Let it out, my brother. Let it out. I, I love it, bro. I love it, bro. For real. Oh, no, I just... Take your time, uh... King. Take your time, brother. Take your time, man. Take your time. You I just, good. I just wish I could have just, uh, just, just, just talked to him. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause I didn't, I didn't talk to him after I left. And I just wish I could have just, you know, just like Al. You know, I apologize for the way I acted and, and um. But hey, Stu, again, real it's, quick. Not, it's not a regret. It's just as a, as a man. Yeah, Ugh. but 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 hold on. But let me ask you this. You were just yeah. invited. You were just invited somewhere Sunday, right? Um. Well. Yeah. Where, where were you invited? So. So I'm actually for the first time since since 2007, I'm going back to uh, the Raiders reunion. And uh, dude, so I want to read this. I want to read this. So about a year ago, because here's what happens when you. And this happens with a lot of NFL players. When, Hold when on, you, Stu, even, everybody in the chat is saying that they love you and they respect you. I want you to know everybody in here is saying this is real shit. We respect it. Keep doing what you're doing, though, brother. Just know you got people well, in here. I want, I, I, want, I want to say this, that I, even from when I was in high school, the fans were so important to me. Yeah. And I always wanted to make sure that I gave them the time that they deserve, right? Because... If it's not for the fans, there is no there, there's no sport. There's no money. There's no one coming to the games. There's no one buying jerseys, right? And there's sometimes we can't get to everybody. You know, we just can't. You can't. You can't sit down because you sometimes you just gotta go. But I, I I always made sure, like even at Purdue, I would stay three hours after the games yes. to to talk to the fans, just to just so that you guys got a chance to meet us. Because again. You know, basketball players, you see them. You're close on the court. Baseball players, I mean, you can, you know how those guys look. Football, as a fan, even when you go to the games, half the time look at the jumbotron because it's so far away, right? Yeah. So we have our helmets on. Um, before the game, we're underneath the stadium, our own parking lot, like security everywhere. We're, like we're always secluded during the season. We're always in the facility, so we're not out and you just never see us. So it's not like we're even. It's almost like we're robots, you know? I mean, it's like you don't think of us as real people, you know, yeah. with no emotion. It's just like those guys are just killers and just whatever, right? Yeah. So whenever I got a chance to talk to the fans and, and, and just just ask them how they're doing or whatever and just, you know, let them know that, like, it's amazing. <laughs> I remember there would be times 
at the Safeway in Alameda and uh, on Bay Farm Island. Yeah. I see somebody. Usually they wouldn't recognize me because I'm just a, again, I look like a normal white dude, right? So, like, <laughs> they're not going to think I'm a football player, even though they'll always say, like, well, you're not that big. I'm like, well, actually, me and Sean Taylor are, like, the two biggest safeties in the league. But yeah. they think of everybody being, like, big, big. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So, but I remember when they would, like, hmm, you're buying milk? Uh, like, you buy your own milk? Like, well, yeah, what? Yeah. I bought my own milk, my own toilet. I wipe my own ass. I you know take my own trash out. Like, yeah. <laughs> so it, it's just it, that's the thing. You know, people don't, and I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can understand that. And well, here's the other thing too: is some players they want to act freaking bougie as hell and like not do that stuff. You know what I'm saying? We, we talked about that, and I want that to go into a segue real quick because please. for those who don't know in the nation. Stu played with uh, NFL legend at Purdue. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. I got it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That first, that first, please. Yeah, I know. That, and I for, that and for, all, for all the people listening, it, type in like, dude, you guys said something and everyone back to it, okay? Because I, I guarantee you, we're fucking bing, bing, bing. We're oh, over here. Everyone is saying they love you, man. You were one of their favorite players back then. Well, again, I appreciate. Like, it's been. Me once again. When you leave somewhere, you're fu- you get fired. You know, I mean, you unless you unless you're a god, unless you're blessed to be able to choose and retire when you want to. Everybody else gets fired, and usually when you get fired from a job, you're not really hanging out with the dude that you you know that you just got fired from. You think like they don't they don't like you at all. Like you just think when you leave there, man. And I have a story that last year when I had some interaction with the fans, and I. I was upset, and um, I always treated the fans good, and there were some times where I, 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 I was, like, over it. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, I'm a real – I'm a person, too, man. And I'm like, listen, I, I don't need to put up with this shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but anyways, so I actually – dude, I wouldn't watch football. Like, literally PTSD from it because it bring up, like – yes. You, it, when you're in football at practice, you don't ever really talk about the good plays. You focus on the plays you did bad on. So it's a lot of – when I left, you don't think of the good stuff. All you think is, I remember those plays where I screwed up on this, and that's why I got cut. And So you're just always thinking negative, right? So I, okay. I, I never even wept the Raiders. I didn't talk about the Raiders. I didn't wear any Raiders gear. I didn't watch the NFL. I didn't watch none of that stuff because I just – I just felt like I was, I, I failed because for me, when I go anywhere, even when I was in, when I was in fourth grade or shit, third grade, I wanted to be the best at whatever I was doing. Yes. I mean, does, does anybody out there really want to be the last guy? Fuck no. Even though they say that shit like, oh, it doesn't really matter. Well, you're telling so you're telling me it doesn't really matter, but if you could be the fastest guy, you would, right? Like, yeah. yeah, so when I go somewhere, I'm looking around going, okay, who do I got to beat to be the best? Who do I got to beat to be the best? So when I got to the Raiders, I, in my mind, I'm going to play there for 15 years, win a couple of Super Bowls, and make it to the Hall of Fame. That was my goal, right? And it didn't work out. So it was the first time in my career where I had ever had adversity like that. Yeah. I've, and I've been very blessed, but... I don't like saying that because it wasn't luck or blessing that got it was my it was my God given ability plus the hard work that I did my approach to it it all went into it so it's not like you know I, I was blessed to not face and I had a great career and I had a great career because I worked my fucking ass off man I I, I it was a lot of sacrifice, dude. I had to sacrifice a lot. I can only and, imagine, brother. I can only imagine. And I will talk about that. But so when that didn't happen, I'm like, holy shit. Like, I don't, I didn't even want to think about it. You know what I mean? And then, and then you get around some fans and oh, I heard you played and you only, oh, you only, play, what, what happened? They cut you and uh, how, many, how many running backs ran you over? And I'm thinking, man, like, Dude, so I don't even bring it up. I really, I, I got to the point where I didn't even, I didn't even like people telling people that I played or whatever. Because again, I didn't win a Super Bowl. I didn't make it to a Pro Bowl. I wasn't a Hall of Fame player. And we talked about earlier, since our teams weren't very good, right? Uh-huh. We didn't get, we didn't get the Monday Night Football games. 
We didn't get the prime time games. So all people saw was, you know, Stuart Scott and them fuckers and just oh, Raiders lose 35 to 21. You're thinking, well, Jesus Christ, you think everybody sucks. They yeah. put 35 points up on those guys. Well, yeah, three of the fucking touchdown interception from recovery. Uh, the uh, offense was more on, on freaking fourth down on our side of the field. Their yeah. offense was working with a short field. We played in 2006. We played the Houston Texans. They finished the game yeah. with negative seven yards passing. And we lost like 24 to 17. They had negative seven yards passing. So That's they just, crazy. You're, you're looking at it. And then also, also and this, is, this is what it's like. So you're looking at the Raiders and all that. They got a white safety. You know, no wonder they suck. Like, no wonder they can't do anything. Dude, hey, you know what I mean? Let me ask you this. No one asked this. I want to know. This is just an off the head question. That defense that lost to the Texans with negative seven yards, right? You put that defense with this Raider team offense right now. What do you do? <laughs> I, I, here's the thing. Hey, I, we, I know on defense, at least we got a chance, dude. Like, having, a, having that little bit of hope, that. Dude, that can do a lot for you. But when you're going out there, you're going to go, you know, like, God damn it. Like, you just, dude, you just, we, we, we went backyard. It is punt alert. And because then you got to think you got to play perfect. Because you're like, dude, if we throw up, we could play a great game and give up. It could be, it could be, you know, two field goals, right? We give up two field goals at six. Cause let's say it's, it's six to seven. And I'm thinking the offense, if, if they just helped us out a little bit, because we're thinking, man, even though we're playing a great game, if you just made one mistake and they score a touchdown, that one play, one play, yeah. lost us the game. And you're thinking, man, if I give up, if I make one mistake, I'm gonna, I'm, we're gonna lose the game. And you can't play that way. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't play not to, not, not to make a mistake. Because then you're, Bro, you, you, you play with some happen. epic. You played with some. Epic, bad. I, listen, I mean, listen to the guys. Our defense. Well, I'm just, oh, sorry, you're talking about uh, on the other side. Wait, other sorry, side. what'd you ask? I'm saying you played with some very bad offenses. Oh uh, yeah, bad. yeah, yeah. Bad. I remember me and you were talking yeah. about my later about you were you were saying, "Al, go get Drew Brees," and we got Jamarcus <laughs> Russell. Oh uh, boy, well, okay. We have to talk so about obviously, yeah. obviously I, I played with Drew Brees. Okay. Yes. So my freshman year at Purdue. Yes. Um, we won, so get this. So I come in as a true freshman. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, I played safety and quarterback in high school. And I have my high school stuff on there too. I was I was, uh, I was the number two athlete. Because you know, like if you don't know what a guy is gonna play, they can categorize you as an athlete out of uh well here. Out of look at this. So I have to super prep. Oh, this is how kids used to get recruited. There was no youth, <laughs> like there was no playing huddle and stuff, right? I love it, man. So if you look here, super prep all Americans. I was so to look at here, it says skilled, let's see, it says skilled athletes. And if you see who number two is, I was the number two Whoa. skilled athlete coming out in the country, Whoa. right? But I wasn't very fast. Like, like Mariucci said, I wasn't fast, though. How, how do I, you know, go figure? Yeah. So anyway, so my, my freshman year, we won the Big Ten. We beat, we beat Michigan. We beat Ohio State. We go up there. We beat Wisconsin. And we went to the Rose Bowl. Unfortunately, we lost. Um, but I, was, I led the team in tackles. I led the team in interceptions. I was Big Ten freshman of the year. I was CBS Sports National true freshman of the year. Um, so I know 30, Drew Brees. 30 in total, right? 30 in total? What's that? 30 INTs in total at Purdue, right? Uh, no, not 30. Thank you, though. I appreciate that. I ended guys? up, I, I, so, uh, my freshman year, I had five. Sophomore year, I had six. My junior year, I got hurt. I had two. My senior year, I had four. So I finished with 17. Oh, shit. I'm way off. Okay. So, so the former record was held by Robinson. Yes. He finished his career with 11 interceptions. I tied that my sophomore year. My sophomore year, I had 11 inter- a total of 11 interceptions. So I'm sixth all-time in the Big Ten with 17. And I think 
Rod Woodson might be number one. Him or Jamarcus Fletcher might be number one in the Big Ten for interceptions. And he only played three years. So that shows how Rod Wood or how good Charles Charles Woodson is. Yes. But here's a, here's actually the Big Ten Freshman of the Year award there. But anyway, so I know Drew Brees. Fire! Talk that shit, Stu. I know Drew Brees really well, and in my opinion, him, Pat Favre, Peyton sure. Manning. There's 30 career INTs at Purdue, man. So maybe I was maybe maybe Wikipedia is tripping. What? Hey, roll with it. Take Keep it. it. Take it. <laughs> hey, I'm not gonna not, I'm not gonna disagree with 30 30 interceptions. That's why I wore 30. INT. That's why that's why I wore 30. The goat. <laughs> <laughs> um so anyway, so Drew Brees, man, he is he he is he is, you gotta love football. To be a professional, because you, you're, you're, I mean, you're, you're, it's all year round, dude. You have to, you have to be, you have to love it. You have to eat it. You have to drink. And Drew Brees, he never stops. Okay. He never stops. So, for instance, we're playing out in San Diego. After, you know, after there, they, um, there's like a little place for the players after the game where the, fa- like, the, their, their family can go and they have a barbecue, there's beer and stuff like that. Well, Sean Phillips played with me at Purdue, who was a defensive end for San Diego. Nick Hardwick was their center. He played at Purdue with me. Drew Brees was there. So I knew like a lot of the San Diego Chargers. Deal was a uh, offensive lineman I played against. So I, I knew a bunch of those guys, right? Okay. So after the game, I think it was my I think it was my rookie year. Um, I go over there and I'm hanging out, you know, having a beer and talking to Brittany Brees and talking to Sean Phillips and you know Drew Brees is is you know doing interviews after it, you know what I mean and. We're just out there shooting shit. Here's the deal. When that game ends on Sunday, let's say at 3.30, mm-hmm. from 3.30 until that next morning at 7.30, I was like, I don't want to think about football. I didn't, I didn't go home and watch the ESPN shit. I wanted to have some beer, hang out, and just cut it out, right? Like, I'm talking to Sean about how things are going, talking to Brittany, and Breeze comes out. I'm like, dude, and he walks up and... I said, hey, man, and I think, I, you know, I'm just bullshitting about something. He's like, he's sitting there, and he's like, hey, Stu, I said, yeah. He goes, in the third quarter, you know when we were driving on you guys, and I'm pretty sure you guys were in cover two. How come you were, how come you were up so close? You are supposed to be back at 12 yards. What are you looking at? I'm like, Drew, what the f-? I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about, dude. Like, but that's just how he was. Like, that's how his yeah. – yeah. That's why he's he's so great because he don't he got to figure that shit out. It's and like, so just put a beer to your fucking mouth, Drew, and shut up. <laughs> I was like, Drew, like really, man, like, dude, like just let it go for a second, man, like shit, you know. <laughs> but no, so so he made everybody. Around. I mean, he just he's just a player, man. He just he just he makes everybody around him better. He makes everybody around him better. I mean, that's, uh, he just, he can just do it. You know what I'm saying? He's got that moxie. He's just, when you, when you have him on your sideline, you're like, dude, no matter what the score is, we knew we got Drew Brees that year. We got a chance, right? Like we got a chance and that's, that's everything, right? So when Drew Brees, he blew his shoulder out his free agency year. Uh-huh. And that was, I think going into the 2007 year, right? I think. And I was, I was like, man, I'm like, please just think about it. Because they thought it might be a career I remember that stuff. And everyone yeah, was like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, let's just take a chance with this. And I'm like, come on. And, you know, usually those team guys stay in their divisions. You know, you see a lot of guys go from Kansas City to Denver, Denver to Oakland, always, you know. Always, yeah. And then, and then of course, that same draft, I was, I was adamant when the, when the media would talk to me. I said, what we need to do, because I knew we needed a quarterback, right? I said, what we need to do is we need to, we need to draft that number two pick, Megatron, Calvin Johnson, and then we need to go and get – we need to go get Josh McCown. Shit. Oh, hold on. You're good, buddy. We need to get – we need to go out and get Josh McCown through free agency, right? And I'm telling the media that, right? Well, we got back to Al. He said, Stu, shut the fuck up about getting – that Calvin Johnson shit done with. We're not doing that. Stop fucking talking about it. I'm like – Oh shit! Okay, I said, yeah, I'm done. I'm, I won't talk about it anymore. That's, I'm, I'm done talking about Emmett Davis. Yeah, absolutely. 
But they picked Jamarcus Russell, and uh, obviously <laughs> Drew did what he did, and you know, and I like Jamarcus Russell. I do. I, he's not a bad guy. Because here's the thing, too. People like, do you think that he maybe knows? Maybe I don't. Well, no. He he would think he's a number two pick, but it just didn't work out. It didn't work out. Do you, do you think that he's gonna go? You know what, guys? Listen. Don't take me at number two. Have that shit back. I'm going to oh, wait till the third round. Hell no. no. I mean, it's going to happen. I mean, is it his fault that it just didn't work out? I mean, he wasn't looking like he was trying to screw up with anything, man. It just... It yeah, just, but, but, but stupid. The, the one thing you can say is this, the whole... Keep, blank, talk, keep talking. I just want to see. I want to check this outlet here. The, the whole blank CD thing and, you know... Ah, this this not being. See, I, don't, I don't. I don't see. I just played one year with them, so yeah. I don't know some of the stuff that happened. Yeah. You know, here's the thing, man. That quarterback position, those guys, dude. You gotta think about this, man. As a quarterback, you know how much stuff. You. I mean, I I was gonna show you some of this stuff. Like, I still have our old game plans and like call sheets of like, dude. I mean, these are like this is the number of plays. I'll, I'll go through some. of some of the stuff That's one time, crazy. but ties this by three for the quarterbacks, dude. So you got to think about this as a quarterback, you got to know what every guy's doing, mm -hmm. and then you got to know what everybody else side's doing. Then you got to check if, if you got eleven of the world's best athletes trying to kill you on the other side, disguising stuff. You got twenty five seconds to figure that out. You snap the ball, and you got what three and a half, four yeah. if you if you're lucky. To figure out where you need to go with these dudes coming down on you, you got a little ball and you're putting it between all these guys. Like, if you think about it, you're like, how do they complete any passes? Like, that just seems ridiculous, right? Yeah. So you got, there's a certain characteristic that you need to be a quarterback, dude. Like, yeah. and some guys they can be athletes and they can be this, but if they don't have that 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 different standard, yeah. it's just. It's not going to work out. It just it, it just isn't, you know. So, and so, so, what is your what's your thoughts on DC on Derek Carr? Um, I will say this. I hope so. That Houston game playing as David Carr, his brother, dude. And I played with David Carr in in New York. He was a backup in New York uh, behind Manning. Yeah, that's the that's the toughest motherfucker I've ever seen. I've heard for three or four years they've led. He led the league in sacks, right? And not saying he led Terrible the league. Offensive lines. Dude, I'm telling you, when we played him, I was watching Derek Burgess unload on this dude, and he would get up like nothing. I'm like, and he just kept getting up. Didn't yell at anybody. Just like, I was like, man, That's this crazy. dude is crazy. And then I, I met him, and he's just a straight Cali dude, just straight, just like, Whatever, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, so then I'm watching, you know, Derek Carr fucking, you know, uh, search throw the ball everywhere at Fresno State. Um, so I like him. I just, to be honest with you, man, I, I'll tell you this. Up until literally a year ago, I didn't, I, I didn't, no, nothing, dude. Yeah. Nothing. Marcus Mariota. So I, as a, my favorite college player after me, like after my time, would be Marcus Mariota. I I love the guy when he was at Hawaii. Um, I have a son, and my my wife's Filipino, so I pictured my son coming out six foot five, looking like Marcus Mariota, right? And he did. And he did. My son did come out uh, looking Filipino, but he was eleven pounds, uh, like eleven point two pounds. So he might be like coming off the edge, bro. He might like be a Bosa brother or something. But anyway, I love it, man. I, I like Marcus Mariota a lot, so I I don't know the whole deal. I know I know that year that Derek Carr got hurt really screwed everything up. I know that that year when you guys had a real when we had a real shot. Um, here's another thing: Greg Olson is a very close friend of mine. Greg Olson was Drew Brees' quarterback coach when I was at Purdue, That's and then crazy. Uh, yep, and then he went to the Bears or you no know, San Francisco. And then he came back to help Joe Tiller, my junior year coach, tight end. His wife was my wife was my wife's track coach at Purdue. He's got sets of twins. His son, he calls his son Little Sue. Like, 
Bad. We want like, yeah. So I'm excited to see Greg Olson. Um, and I don't like to talk football with him. So I mean, I guess I, I would love to say like, what's your opinion on things like that? You know, but um, I don't know enough to have an opinion. I really don't. No, no, no. This is this is my job this season. Okay, hear me out. My job is to get you more involved in what's going on today. That's my job. So well, I'm going to call you. I'm going to text you. I'm going to inbox you on IG. And I'm going to say, hey, Stu, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? What do you think about this? I'm going to be into you, man. I'm telling you. So, so you know you know how I know a little bit about what's going on with the Raiders, right? So I couldn't even I – couldn't, I could not even play Madden, bro. I just played NCAA. I couldn't even – I couldn't even get myself to play Madden. So a buddy of mine – Got mad. I got the PS5, and I'm like, Ugh. and I put it on. I put it on. I played a couple minutes. I'm like, man, I like this shit. Like I'm getting into. It. Like I, this is like, oh man, like I like it. So what I did is I searched, and I found somebody. You know, I can download rosters. Uh-huh. Somebody went through and did the entire everybody's roster from 2005. So I downloaded it. And I'm playing a season with the 2005 Raiders in the two, 2005 season. But before that, I was playing with the Raiders in a regular season. And that's how I knew the players. Like, I, I love I, Josh Jacobs, right? Yes. yes. He's a he, – I, I keep leading – dude, I lead the league. I lead every game with him running. I don't know if he's like that in real life, but I know he's tough. I know that. I know that number 83, the tight end is a beast. I can't think of his name, but – Who's 83, the tight end? Oh, the big guy. Darren Yes. They are. He's a beast. Um, Hold on. Let me, I'm let me, let me to ask that. you this real quick. I want to ask you this because I, I really want to know this question. My, I don't want to cut you off. But, I, but so recently you just won a case, right? Yes. And, and yes. Let me ask you, and, and we don't have to go into detail, but all I want to say is, was that a reason why maybe you said, I don't even give a fuck about football no more? I don't even want to pay attention. Did, did the love go away from it, from how the league treated you? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Because I will tell you this. The, the football world, when you think about, what do you think about college football and NFL football, because college football, that's, that, that, that's a game. It's, you're, you're working. It's, it's yes. not, yes. it's, it's a full-time job. You know, there's a lot of money involved. When money's involved, they don't, people don't fuck around, dude. Like, it's, it's serious. Yeah. People's lives are on, on, like, they're putting, uh, there's a guy who's got a family he needs to feed, putting faith into a 19-year-old kid. Like, you, you better know what the fuck's going on, man. That's some serious stuff. That's why I always, I, I always, my main goal was when I stepped on that field, that, that number, that number on that jersey, right? It's not just me wearing that jersey. It's me. It's every guy who's ever worn that jersey. Cause I know this. Every year I know who's wearing number nine at two. And you better be representing that number good. You better not be fucking around out there, dude. And it's not only that, it's everybody that's connected to that person wearing that number, family members, coaches. So I, I always thought this. I said, you know what? I'm not going to go out there and bullshit it and let, let, these, like, let these people down because they fought really hard for that. They have respect for it. They want you to do well. It's, it's serious. you got to take this shit serious, man. You can have fun, but you need to prepare. I mean, it, it's preparation, man, because here's the deal. They're – they're professionals too. They're great athletes too, yes. right? It always made me laugh when I'm sitting there praying before the game, and you know we're asking God for a win. And I'm like, well, they're doing the same thing in the other locker room. So like, they're like they're they're gonna win some games too, man. Like they got God on their side as well. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. you, I always knew that. Like like, I just wanted to make sure at the end of the day, I did everything that I can do. To win, and if we didn't win, I could still go home at night and sleep. I said, you know what? I prepared my ass off. I I knew the plays. I, you know, I might have gave up one, but I made more than I gave up. I I I, I was out there every. I, I I didn't give up on any play. So shit, we lost. Two, you know, two, two questions because I like how you brought that number situation up. 
Speaking of numbers. Fun. God damn it. This stupid light, though, man. Hold Don't worry about it. Mine will die in a minute, too. But this is a great conversation. So who gives a shit? All right. There's a great number in Raider Nation. Number 24. You, Ooh. Had, the, you had the luxury of playing with one, right? Luxury of playing, well, of playing with one and then being coached and mentored by the other one. That is crazy. Give us, give us some, give us some knowledge, some stories on being around those guys. Here's the deal, dude. We don't want to blow a rod in the first show here, bro. Okay, so I'm gonna okay, tell yeah, one. Okay, okay. All, right, all right, let me ask this. Then. Oh no, 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 no! I want, I know, I want, I want to tell this story. Oh, I have. Yeah, Willie Brown was one, the best one, man. One, 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 one. Willie Brown, he was, he literally was. Wait, hold on. I had something before you said that. Oh, I wanted to talk about the, the, the football world, and we talked about um, the way you're, you're treated. There's, there are not a lot of good coaches. And you're thinking, like, really? Like, when I got to the league, it was almost, it was almost like, worse. And you're like, how the fuck did you get this? Well, here's what happened. <laughs> it's small. It's a very small, small world. You're talking about a group of maybe 300 guys. Yes. And if you're in the group, guess what happens? When I was coming up, he hired me as a GA. I worked my way up. Now he's working for a job. I'm an offensive coordinator. I bring him back in. He comes up, and then he's a GM, and they all just hire each other, man. It's, it's just a good old buddy system. And sometimes that's, guys... That's, 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 that's everywhere. That's what's fucking... That's what it is. No, I, it, it's everywhere. But... The thing is, 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 is in that world, though, again, it's everyone knows each other, right? So if, if someone doesn't like you, right, mm -hmm. what are, there's, a, there's a lot of egos, okay? Oh, yeah. There's sure. a lot of egos. And there's one thing about me, man, like, I, I, I respect a man. Well, here's the thing that always gets me, man, is the first time I meet anybody, when I meet guys, Okay. Mm -hmm. People are going to have a perception of me as a, as, a, as, a, as a former big, tough athlete. You know, I'm a, I'm a bigger guy. You know, they're going to project what they think I think is important, right? So every time, I mean, every time I meet a guy, first thing they tell me is uh, how many fights they've been in and how tough they are. Right away, didn't even ask, I don't even know their name at first, yeah. how tough they are, how much money they make. Uh -huh. And then how many women they've been with? I'm going, dude, what's your name? You know, what, yeah. listen, <laughs> listen, hey, listen, bro. You've got a bigger dick than I do, man. You're tougher than me. Can we move on? Can we move on? Right? No! So coaches, 90% of those coaches, they have no confidence, man. They, 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 they are very, um, almost immature. So what they do is, Instead of this, and the great ones do it, and Joe Tiller did it here. He went out and got the best play. He got the best coaches he could, right? I'm thinking for me. I know what I'm good at, okay? Because I owned an indoor football team for four years, and we'll talk about that later. And I got a lot of my style from Al Davis, and I knew what I was good at, and I knew what I didn't know. Like I don't know shit about offensive line. I'm gonna go out and find a dude that knows and say, "Listen, man, you just listen. I don't know offensive line, but I'm, I trust you." So you do it, and whatever, it's going to be better than what I got. You know what I'm saying? But you get these coaches, man, and they get guys around them who know less than them. Because yeah. you know why? Yes. Because they won't question them because they don't even know. And two, they know that, um, they know that they're not going to move past them. Right? Okay, hold on. So, so let me ask you a question. We'll get back to the 24. I like that you did that. This is a perfect segue. Because I know, I know that great you – know, I know that Olsen is your guy, right? Um, or here, actually, the open is my guy, and also, too, again, how small, small world, right? So, I'm looking up, I'm, uh, this was a couple weeks ago, I'm went through a mall with a buddy of mine, and we were just, I was looking up, um, uh, what, what's the GM? Uh, uh, this guy, Mike Mayock. Yeah, because Mike Mayock used to, used to do the NFL network, right? Uh -huh. So, I just wanted to, I just wanted to, I just wanted to know his background because he talks really good about him. I, I've always liked the guy, right? So when he got the GM job, 
I'm like, man, I never, I didn't, I'm like, how did he, you know, how did he get that job or whatever? And I don't want to get in his battle, but he was in the real estate. And then he did this stuff and then whatever, right? So then I'm looking and it says that during COVID, the two defensive back coaches for Oakland couldn't go to the game. So he came down and coached the DBs. Uh, I forgot what game it was. So I'm like, well, let me look and see who the DB coaches are. So I'm looking and I see Taylor Johnson. I'm going, Taylor Johnson, I know that name. Sure enough, Taylor Johnson coached defensive backs at Purdue in 2011 to 2013. One of the only coaches that ever brought me back to actually talk to the defense because, again, these coaches, they don't want anyone stealing the show. I think I'm going to get all the credit because I went and talked one time or something, right? Yeah. So I'm like, I looked through my phone. I saw his number. I call him. He answers. I said, Coach, what's going on? I said, it's Stu. I said, I was out there in Oakland, man. He goes, that's not the DB coach. I'm the running backs coach. So I got connections with the running backs coach as a close friend of mine as well. So you see how that shit works, though? And, and here's what happens. Like, let that job becomes available. And you'd be the best coach or whatever, but that staff does has no idea who you are. I could call them and say, Coach, oh, I know, Stu. Let's bring him in. And the other guy doesn't even get a shot. Yeah. But they're comfortable around me, right? Yeah. But again, I, and here's the, God, I got another, like, just to, to touch on that, I have a close, uh, I don't want to get into that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, We got a million people in the chat, million people here. I want you to know, I'm going to tell you this real quick, Stu, because I told you this on the phone. But, hey, can you, what, what we need to get is we need to get somebody that maybe gets these questions, then we can, we can go back with just me and you and answer them and just put them up without, it being live or something. I, I want to I answer you're, you're all these like questions. Me. You're like me. You're long-winded as fuck. So, so it, 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 I, I can pull the comments up on the screen, and then it's like we, we gonna we gonna get through them. But no, no, no. I know. Well, I'm, I, I just I want to hear these questions. I love. I, see, I love. I love getting out. And one reason I like getting out again is because I like people to know the real shit. Yes. Okay. Yes. But I'm gonna tell you, people out there, these dudes that get on TV. And they want to act all cute and wear these dumbass fucking clothes and looking like this and up there acting like they're smart and trying to sell their own. What? It's all bullshit, guys. Okay. And they say some stuff and I'm sitting there going, that, what are you talking about, man? So I, I like to get in the front because again, I really don't have an ego, man. I'm, I've talked to people. Get, <laughs> there was a time, there's this uh, social media site. Because again, because my, my, my mouth that owned this is from King Touching, we'll talk about later. I don't leave the house, okay? Yeah. But I need social interaction. So there was this uh, site called Live Me, where you go uh, on there and you broadcast just like this, right? Yeah. And, I, 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 and like, they do random stuff where I could, you could just pop up on the screen and talk to each other, right? And then you just go on and meet people from other countries and stuff. I knew a guy for three days, okay? Talk to him just like this for hours, right? And he, he saw like a, a, a Raider jersey, he's like, Bro, you're a Raiders fan? He's like, I love the Raiders. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a fan. I played for him. He's like, what the fuck did you do? You did? I'm like, you didn't know that? But like, for three days, I didn't bring it up. It wasn't like, I don't, like, yeah. I don't have an ego, dude. I, I make mistakes every day. Again, like I said, I put, uh, dude, hey, I'm hey, a can, can, can I say this, too, real quick? Because this is the definition of not having the ego. This man played in the, do you mind? This is where we met. Stu has what? no ego. He, he, Stu reached out to me and said, we, I, I like your style, I, man. I met you. I met, I, I talked to you for the first time five minutes before this. Yeah. No, That's no, the no, first but, conversation we had. But you know how real and how down to earth you are? The first message he said to me was, I like your style, player. <laughs> I that did. Real ass shit. All egos to the side. You know, there's only one more player that I talk to right now. <laughs> It's Max, it's Max Crosby, defense and for the Raiders. Um, yeah, him, guess what? The East, Eastern Michigan. I'm a Michigan boy, dude. That, he's, that, and, he's, and, and we, we talk constantly and no ego. He's like my brother, my dog. He's good people. Like, this is how it should be. You know what I mean? Like, this is like. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. I'm telling you, Stu, you can be rich in media now, bro. I'm trying to tell you. You have that personality, brother. You can make it and be successful, man. I'm telling you. Well, I got no. Hold on, no, because I'm collecting disability. If I do anything, it's just it's just for chair. It's I I I I can't make enough. You know, I can't make any money off of it. So there, again, this is just 
This is just I want to do this. Me, 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 you can work and we could do some under the um. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> you, can make, you, can make, you can make as much money as you want, okay? Go ahead. Go no, ahead. I want to say just one more thing about, so I'm on this, like this site, right? You uh -huh. follow people, right? Like you follow, in this, right? And I would get these people, Steve, you're following way too many people. Like, so what? Like, so if you look at right now on Instagram, I think I follow like 1,500 people. I have like 700 people who follow who me. Who cares? But you know what I'm saying? Like you look at other people, and I'm like, people I know, I'll follow them, I'll like their stuff, and like, I know you see me on that motherfucker. Like, give me a follow back, dude. Like, are you serious? Like, oh, I only have 50 followers. Like, that, like, you know, like, that makes them think, like, whatever. I'm like, dude, get over yourself, man. Like, come on, dude. Like, again. It's weird to me, bro. Just like, just like you, just like me, I go in the bathroom, I take a shit and wipe my ass, dude. Like, that that levels some shit out, dude. When you're just sitting next to a guy taking a shit, it evens the like you're just a guy, bro. I mean, you're good at football, but you're a dude that grew up pissing his pants and had a mom who used to wipe your ass, dude. So get yeah. like you're a guy. You're you're just a dude. Hold on, Be before we forget, bring that Raider uh the invitation back up for this Sunday. I want oh, to read I it. didn't read I didn't I didn't read it. That's right. No, I want to read that. For those who who's just joined a lot I do too. I want to go over those are game balls and stuff up there too. One time we'll go over all that stuff as well. So how about we end on this? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Because otherwise, dude. I know I'll be I on here. We'll go, go for four hours. I know, yeah. But hold on, I just me growing up in Panama, Michigan, blue collar as it comes, right? It was a, it, when you think of, if you, so I-75 runs through Detroit, Flint, and Saginaw. Mm -hmm. So GM, all that steering gear, it's all the same shit. Detroit, Flint, and Saginaw, all the same stuff. It just goes, Detroit, Flint gets a little bit smaller, and Saginaw a little bit smaller. I go but to Detroit every Thanksgiving. My father-in-law is from Detroit. Okay, my, my brother and sister live in Detroit. Uh, my yeah. family still lives in Michigan. I mean, half the it, it, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, what, a church, a gun store, and a liquor store on every corner. That's just how it is. Every corner. Yes. And you know what? You go to work, six o'clock, you come home, you drink your six pack, 12 pack, you go to bed, you get up, you don't bitch, you don't Dang complain. Shit. And my dad, my dad was, uh, uh, he came from South Dakota. He uh, was a deputy sheriff, um, and he was – so he, he's big Stu. I'm little Stu, if that puts it any, any – like, <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's, he's one of the – and I, I actually, you know what? If you would, I encourage everybody, if they really want to know about me, look at my Saginaw Sports Hall of Fame speech on my YouTube page. It's 20 minutes, and it, it talks about my bringing it up and everything. But my father, um, he takes me into jail. And just to, I wanted to see where, you know, where dad worked and those inmates, Stu, like he had the most respect, the most respect out of all of them. But he also liked working there because he liked fighting with the guys sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he'd come home, his mouth would be split up, you know what I'm saying? But he told me, I said, dad, you know, how, you know those are criminals. Like you don't talk, you're not friends with those guys. I, you know, they're drug dealers and all this stuff. He said, son, he goes, I'll tell you this right now. He said, I don't care if, if it's the janitor or a criminal or the guy who owns the business or like the sheriff. He says, you treat everybody with respect, man. You treat everybody the same. If that person has not done anything to you, you have no right to, to have an opinion or, 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 or downplay that person, right? So, Dude, like, and then his gym, Old Town Gym, 31 years, it was it, nothing matched. He put half the equipment, welded half the equipment together. So you had half the in, half guys working there was the deputy sheriff. The other half were the inmates that got out. So, I mean, you had, I mean, literally, I mean, Hispanic, black, uh, gangsters, disciples. So, like, I was just, I grew up in an environment where people, we're just all friends, and they're just pumping iron and, and working, right? Like no one like used to be, Stu. I it's, and that's a blast to come from there. I see why you there. don't leave the house, Stu. I see why you don't leave the house, bro. I get it. But I'm blessed 
who have grown up in that environment because I, I, I was a guy, and that biggest compliment I get is, Stu, you're, you're just Stu. You're just, you're the same way you are because I live by the golden rule, dude. Treat everybody the way you want to be treated, man. And what was I, what was I going with that? What the hell was I saying? First of all, I'm going to say one thing before you go into what you were about to say. But for I know we're going to do this, but I had something to say, though. Real, real, real quick, real quick. Every time we do a show from now on, because Stu has many stories, what we're going to do is we're going to do a we're going to do a favorite teammate uh, uh, episode. We'll do a this episode. So we so for now on, when we do shows, we're going to do one where we can answer all you guys. I'm, I'm going to put all your questions together and we're going to do an episode for each one of them. Let me ask you this. Can you get another person on here? Yeah, for sure. OK, well, I'm going to I'm going to get some of the I'm getting my teammates back. I'm gonna get, we're gonna get some guys back, dude. We'll, we'll, we'll even have we'll have a guest on top of me being a guest. I would love it, man. Look, man, look, anything Raider related, I, I look, I'm 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 all for it, brother. I want you to you know how excited you, no, you know how excited I am though? That was a huge part of my life that I I completely avoided. I wanted nothing to do with it because I felt like I was a failure. I felt like I, 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 I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Stu. And then I sat, I sat there one day and I said, Don't do that, man. I said, I did something that such a small percentage can do. And I played for one of the best organizations in the world. And one thing about me, you can never say this. My career wasn't as long as it should have been, but I always, performed i was always playing some of these dudes they're on practice squad for three years and then they might run down on kickoff for a little while and then they're a backup and then they start one year and make a big play in a playoff game on monday night football and that extends their career or they're a, they're a coach's kick that fuck boy type thing and that's why they play five years because Talk that they don't shit. Quite, they don't qu they don't question the coach i just know this like you can put on any game any name, and if you can find a play where I'm, I'm half-assing it, please come find me. That's Stu, the thing. Stu, you play safety. Nobody can ever say no shit to you. You played the, the safety position in the NFL. Strong safety at that. You put no, I wish, no, I wish I played strong safety. I was free, man. I was in that goddamn post, man. I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on. What? What? It's the alcohol. <laughs> Hey, here, here's what I, here, here's what hey, I challenge you. You came, you came out of a draft where we drafted another safety in the first round. Gibson. No, no, no uh-uh. That was the year before. That was the year before. No, that was two years before. Gibby was 02. Gibby, Gibby was 02, I was 04. I'm pretty sure. No, yeah. Okay, you did play free, but... No, no, no. It was, okay, it was Gibson. They, they got Gibson... They had um, uh, Dorsett was here for a little bit. Uh huh. Nambi, they actually when Nambi came, they they did move him to safety because he wasn't able to do corner his first yes. year. Yes. Yes. Then yes. it was me, and then the next year they brought in Ronaldo Hill, who was the the fucking best man. That guy is the fucking best. Oh no, I can't even Ray Buchanan. They brought in Ray Buchanan. Yes, yes. yes. Listen, I reconnected with Ray, Ray Buchanan two days ago. And that man, I owe a lot. I owe, what I owe him is he taught me how to be a professional. Because there's, there's being a football player, and then there's being a professional and how to conduct yourself out in public, how to look, how to travel, how to prepare. And he didn't have to do that, and he came to me. You know, and a lot of guys, a lot of guys, they, they feel themselves a lot, man. They do. They really do. Let me say this, brother. You hit like a strong safety. I go full speed, man. I don't know any free safeties to, in today's, <laughs> not too many of them, that, that will go up and knock somebody's fucking head off like you did. So, you know, it was a different era, different strokes. Here, different here, I'll just tell you this. This sums it all up. This is how I played since I was in fourth grade football. If it's going to be, it's up to me, which meant. I'm not waiting for anybody else to make a fucking play. Yes. I, you know what? I, give me the ball. I want, I want it as many times as you don't want it. I'll, I'll take that thing. Let me get that rock, dude. 
I'm not gonna I'm not gonna practice for so many hours out of the freaking year and go into a game and take plays off. I was out there every play I could be from fourth grade until senior year, and then at Purdue, I wasn't was playing both ways. But I'm like, I've never. And, and let's see, in high school, I missed one game because of an ankle. College, I missed one game because of a knee. And in the NFL, I missed one game because of a calf. Yeah. And you know this, some dudes, they, they're always hurt, bro. They are always hurt. Oh, so I just, I just played, I, my mindset, I didn't even think about it, was I'm just going full speed. And the other thing, my coach and, and, and Kyle, Kenny Green, who, again, I owe a shit ton of, of, of my game to him, um, he, play, he was the last white safety to be drafted in the first round before Adam Archuleta. He came out of Washington State, was uh, drafted by uh, the, the St. Louis Cardinals, right? Mm -hmm. And he told me that, dude, when I got to Purdue, I mean, I played defensive back, but I didn't know anything. I was just fast and an athlete. I made plays. When I got to Purdue, I couldn't even backpedal, dude. I literally didn't even know how to backpedal. And he took me from not knowing how to backpedal to being – a starter as a true freshman and getting my first interception at Notre Dame in a matter of like what, five weeks. But he says this, <laughs> dude, dude, I had my best game against Notre Dame. I'm a fighter. Uh, hey, 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 Timmy Brown, man, I, I, look, he made me a Notre Dame fan when I was a kid. Dude, so. I, I, I have, I have so many friends that went to Notre Dame, but I just that's a huge rivalry, bro. You know you're back on the schedule this year for the first time. Look, hold on, real quick. Everybody that's, that's commenting in the comment section, <laughs> we're going to talk. Look, I, we, look there's, there's not enough time to talk about all the questions. Yeah, oh, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We're going to get them in. But, hey, let me tell you this. And we're, gonna, not, uh, we're also going to do this. We are going to – we're going to – some of these games, we're going to watch some film, and I'll talk through some stuff. But we're going to watch those Notre Dame games. That. I would love that, brother. But, hey, this is when I knew that you didn't give a fuck. When we played Miami <laughs> – and you got that interception in the end zone and ran it back 30, 30 yards, right? I don't know. Was it the quarterback that hit you? No. He, 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 oh, no. It could work. So he just blocked the tight end, goddamn it. I'm I gone. Know, know. You're, you're gone. You're, you're gone 100 yards. But he trucked you. Not, but the, hey, but the way you got up, it seemed like you didn't even get fucking hit. I'm like, what the fuck is – I was a kid. I was younger. I was what? I was very – I was hella young. What, like, what the fuck? Yeah. You, like, Stu acted like – you got up and start dancing. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, because even like, even like Jim Plunkett was like, and then he just tear down and like, I just, woo, popped up. And well, <laughs> that is just, there was like that. I just, I, that's part of like, yeah, that's the other thing. And that's, you know, I watch, I, 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 again, I didn't watch a whole lot of pro sports, but I tried to get back into it. And I watched game two of the NBA finals. I'll never watch another NBA basketball game in my fucking life. It's so I'll funny. never watch, dude. And I so I played in high school against Jason Richardson and Draymond Green's a buddy of mine. So, and I was I was a big Andre Cooper fan because when Andre Cooper first came in the league, he would like he would, he would come in and so I, I'm like he's the one tough dude, right? And I'm watching this shit, and they're just they come in and they fall and they're oh and they hold the replay and they barely get like this, Great. and I'm like. I know this dude when I see a, a, a player like make a 60 yard run and then like this, and I'm like, dude, oh, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be the guy every play, man. You, you can't just do one play and, oh, I did my, like, you gotta run that shit again. So when people are acting like that, like, dude, they're, if they're trying to play this shit up. That, dude, that hurt. You don't think that shit didn't hurt, but I wasn't gonna let, I wasn't gonna let them know it. I don't show no weakness. And you grew up in Michigan watching them Detroit Piston teams, so I know you know what it is. Dude, again, if you watch, if you get, again, if you, get, if you can watch my speech and know where I grew up, the athletes I grew up around, you'll, it'll, it'll blow your mind the amount of NBA, NFL talent that I was around. I got, I got to get my father-in-law on with us one day because he played at Brother Rice um, in Detroit. He went to school. He was supposed to oh, go. Birmingham Brother Rice. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He played against Magic. He played against a bunch of guys. I got to bring him on one of these. Dude, yeah. I'm telling you, the, the state of Michigan, if you, like, it's a unique state, man. I mean, if, 
If I start talking about the people from Michigan, actors and rappers and singers and athletes, you'd be like, what you gotta be fuck? kidding me. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. are you serious? Because it's a, it's a, it's a tough, that's why I moved down here to Indiana, dude. I mean, I tried my hardest, but I got four kids and blocks were being shut down. My high school's not what it used to be, man. When the auto industry fell out, um, it's just, there's no money there. The education, it's just, it's not safe. And we moved back down here to West Lafayette where, um, it's just, it's just a better environment, but it, How far are you from I love it. Oh, dude, I'm by 45 minutes. Okay. So look, if I the Raiders take- play here, the Raiders play here, don't they? We play the Colts. What's up, man? You want to link up and get some beers? Yeah. Let's do it. Also, also too. Rob Ryan, I talked to Rob Ryan. Love Rob Ryan. Okay. Um, Wink Martindale. Woo. I love I no listen, I love him. But I thought he was just Robbo's drinking buddy. Like for real. <laughs> and like he's like winning Super Bowls with the Ravens and about to be a head coach. I'm like <laughs> What? Really? Like, oh my God. But okay, Clayton Lopez was my coach who Brought me into Detroit, so I love Clayton Lopez, but probably my best coach, um, one of the guys that I still talk to to this day. So my high school football coach, my first football coach, uh, Joe Taylor, Brock Spack was my defensive coordinator and the recruiter at Purdue, Kenny Green, Willie Brown, Rob Ryan. um, I want to make sure I get my guys, but Chuck Pagano. That must do Chuck Pagano. Here's the thing. In 2006, when I had my best year, it was under Chuck Pagano. And here's the deal. He wanted to stay. He wanted to stay in Oakland, but Al wouldn't give him a he, – he's like, Al, like, what's going on? And during that time, um, uh, Bush Davis, with his boy from Miami, was the head coach at North Carolina, was like, Chuck, I got a job for you to be the defensive coordinator for the Tar Heels. But I need you to answer me. He's like, Al, what's going on? And Al wouldn't answer him. And then he left. And then I'm like, damn, dude. But Chuck Pagano is the the realest, coolest dudes. Doesn't doesn't yell. He's like, you guys are professionals. I don't need to see. Coach, I just tell you this, guys. If you look and you watch coaches that are screamers and that are, are belittling guys on the field, it's because they have no confidence in themselves. Yeah. And that's a way for them to, 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 to feel better about themselves. It's bullshit. You don't need to do that to be a good – all the great coaches I had didn't do it because the more you do it, you just, he's yelling again, bro. Like, you just cut him out. But if, if Chuck did get in my ass, you, you know what? I'm like, well, I must have been fucking up then. Like, I, I better – Let me ask you this real quick, Stu, because we got two – Two more before we before we finish up. How did you feel about us going to Vegas from Oakland? You know, uh, I don't know. I the stadium. I mean, the facilities were bad in Oakland, man. They were so outdated. Very the stadium bad. was fall. The stadium was falling apart when it rained. Literally, guys, when it rained in our portion of the locker room, we would have trash bins. And it would be leaking, like, through the ceiling. Everything was green and yellow. Um, that baseball field was a bitch to play on, man. Yeah. But I don't even like – I. the funny thing is, when I get Raider stuff, when I said, fuck this, I'm a rep. I'm, I'm like, dude, I get to rep the team that, like, everyone wishes they could rep. I'm like, so I got I, – dude, I got so much gear, dude. I don't like saw all those old starter coats and stuff. But I like the Oakland Raiders. I like Oakland. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not into the Las Vegas thing yet. But here's the deal you got to think about. I'm about tradition, too, dude. Like, there's just something about Oakland Raiders, man. Like, that. Yes. And, yes. And, like, like, the town and just, dude, that whole that whole scene, like, the high seat movement and, like, I met two sports and 40. Still, and what like, you know about that, man? Oh, I'm, dude, wait till you see my scraper. Wait till you see my scraper. I got my red in the man. Dude, we, I, used to, dude, I used to go inside the whip and everything, man. Like, dude. 
I still, I used to be, I'd be in downtown at Mingles. The only white dude in there. To That's get me fucking, yeah. I'm so like that, that shit, bro. But again, so you, you, I've been lucky. So you talk about where I grew up in Michigan and just like the, the style and like that toughness. And then I go to Oakland and I get that whole experience. And like that, you know, I listen to I Am Sue and I listen to, you know, uh, uh, God damn it, what's his name? He's a nasty motherfucker. Um, I, I, I got to send you some of my music, man. Dude, I love, dude, I, I, I'm a big, well, that's actually where I get my name from, by Butcher. My, because when I was at, it, oh, I was DJ Sad Nasty the Butcher, because back in our day, we, we had CD players in the limousine, right? So I used to make, I used to make all the mixed tapes. So I think like yeah. chopping up music, right? So that's what I got called a butcher. That's kind of where it came from or whatever. So I love music, man. And that, I, I love all, I love all of that stuff, man. That, that whole. Hey, bro, I, I don't think you understand, Stu. You made, bro, you made my fucking week. You said you ghost rided the whip, bro. <laughs> Let's yes. go. <laughs> so I'll tell you, so. You want to know who probably one of my closest friends was? Here, get this. Out of college and NFL, one guy came to my wedding with his wife, and there's no way you would know who it was. But I'm going to tell you, the one guy, the guy that I was really close with that you'd be like, are you serious? Fucking Derek Burgess. Wow. And Derek Burgess was one of the scariest office. That dude was just, that guy was, he didn't fuck around. Like, he... He was like, he was just a dude that you just didn't, you don't fuck with the guy, right? Like he, he was, he was darker than dark, first of all. He looked like, we call, he looked like Blade, right? Yeah, he yeah. had almost like pointed ears and he had no, yellow he, eyes. He dark as fuck. And I remember, I'm looking and I didn't really, I mean, I, I didn't say, I, I was speaking with spoken to type. Like if I didn't know someone, I'm like, I'm probably going to act all buddy buddy with your ass. Like I'm not that type of dude, right? Yeah. And I remember he he rolled up in a in a SS I looked in an SS truck all black SS truck right and we have meetings and we're about thirty minutes for practice to get dressed and shit and I'm like I'm walking outside to get something out of my car and I hear like this music playing and there's this SS truck in the back all black pin you know with music playing and I see a Derek Burgess and they're smoking menthol cigarettes before practice New and I'm like. Yes, I'm like, holy shit. I'm like, right. And then here, here's how we became friends. He's walking by me, and I'm listening to music. And I was listening, I grew up listening to like Three Six Mafia, and like, I listen to everything, right? Yeah. And he's, he walks by, he's like, white boy, what are you listening to? I'm like, Three Six. Like, what the fuck do you know about that? I'm like, dude, I've been banging Three Six. I've been banging Three Six since like 96, bro. I, I saw them. At the Saginaw Civic Center, dude. Like, dude, what? Just I love those guys, you know. He's like, okay, okay. So then, I don't know what it was, but I either I said something about Coors Light, and he liked drinking Coors Light. So every Tuesday, I ride. Literally, I would get on my bike and ride to Derek Burgess' house, and we drink a case of of Coors Light together. But it was just because of just like the like just me not. Overdoing anything, yeah. and not me walking it's and who you are for real, like like, and then and then. But here's the thing, though. Like again, knowing like the the Bay Area stuff. Like I don't know how many times I've been in these you know parties or whatever, and of course they're probably like the old white dudes. Like who you know this dude? Like what? I don't have any tattoos. You know, I speak. I don't speak with slang. You know, and all of a sudden like. So I'll say, put it on, and it'll come out of like, well, who the fuck is this white dude that's going to put on fucking, put, hey, put, hey, put on, put on Love Rant, hey, put on some Love Rant, so like, whoop, and I know every word to it and whatever, right? So, but that, that type of stuff is like, how you make, like, how you, like, communicate with people, you know what I'm saying? So, that whole area over there, like, the Oakland area, it's, it's very unique. Um, it it showed me again to just the more people you can get around, and the and, and the more you can have a perspective on things. You know, um, I was very fortunate to go up there and meet the people that I mean, 
you're talking about some of the greatest people in the in the sport. You know, and not only from when I was there, not only the guys from Ryder, but I just go in on Mondays and just talk to Jim Otto and just listen to his stories of like the '60s and like him being a wrestler in the off season and like George Atkinson, me and him just kicking it and Jack Tatum before he passed away and. Lester Hayes would come to practice. I remember the first time I met Lester Hayes. It was at training camp. No, and, no, 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 well, no, 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 All right, yeah, you're right. Uh, no, say that. All right, yeah, that. last thing, last yeah. thing. You know, I need, I need that. I want, no, Lester, we, 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 I need you, I need, I need you to come on. We do an OG show once a week, the Chronicles of the Black Hole. I want you to come on and tell some stories about Lester Hayes. But right now, I want you to go to that paper. For those who don't know, our brother, Stu, just got invited to a Raider reunion on Sunday. And go ahead and read it, brother. Well, it have been doing it for a couple of years, but I just, I, I, again, it was like, I felt like if I go back, like they're going to be like, fuck this, like, like they might like yell at me or something. Like that's how I really felt. Like, dude, like I, that just felt like everyone hated me and this and that. So getting back involved, literally, here's the thing. I've never been, I haven't left, I haven't been on a trip, guys, in like six years because of the anxiety, the depression, uh, being around people. I don't have, I don't have a, um, a filter anymore, you know what I'm saying? And like either, people brother. just talk, I don't either. I feel people you. talk crazy and I, I'll, I'll pull your card on some shit, you know what I'm saying? And Wait. anyways, when I got this back into my life, this to be able to enjoy the Raiders and and be able to talk about those days and get around like like the one that today's like man I haven't heard that name in forever he was the first round pick and I was like wow I was like man you know I just I, you just think like you always just think the negative yeah. literally though having this back into my life and and some guys they're in such a state right now that if 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 they were to call him and like a little letter like this would honestly save their life literally that's that's how serious this shit is, is head injuries. If it wasn't for a letter like this, knowing that someone cared about you and gave a shit about you, yeah. you're going, holy smoke, someone actually is, is writing me a letter to say thank you rather than writing me something to ask me for something or to yeah. take something from me or to call me a fucking wash up or uh, an addict or a loser or whatever it is. Like, this saves people's lives, man. And the Raiders are the trailblazers right now and alumni like this is unheard of what this this right here is unheard of at any even a high school level for what i'm about to read you guys and for what the oakland Raiders are doing they have four full-time staff people just for alumni they're only there's one guy his, 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 there's one guy's job his only job is to call former oakland raider LA Raider, 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 you know, once a Raider, always a Raider, to call them just to say, how are you doing, first of all? And then, do you know that you have access to this program? Do you know that you can apply for this? Do you know that we have this? Do you know that we want you to come back as much as we, we want to help you out as much as you can? Because a lot of guys don't know. They have no idea because the NFL doesn't promote anything. They're not going to, they're not going to call up and say that. No, not at all. Right, and here's the thing. The general public, do you think I could stand up here and ever complain about anything in my life? I can't complain about anything because first of all, and this is the honest God truth, man, I in this time and era, because again, I'm a white guy with no tattoos, I speak clearly, everything's been given to me. I've had white privilege, I've never had to work with I've never had to work through anything. I've never been around urban people. I don't know what it's like to be segregated against, right? So, what the fuck was I going to say about that now? <laughs> I had a good point. I was on. Well, uh, damn it. Um, you were about to say that e e either way, what the fuck is going on? You're still a legendary Raiders player. <laughs> That's that was one of my, I, that was, I've seen that talk, but that's one of my what big ones. What I'm going to say is I am a legendary Raiders player. I don't care how oh, many years I play. No, no, I got it, I got it, I got it. 
The last thing that I can do is complain about my life because, again, I, 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 I got – no, here's the thing. Dude, I wish I was lucky and got drafted. I'm going, oh, yeah, that's right. I was lucky. The Raiders just pulled my name out of fucking hat. I was just – they drafted me. Like, dude, that's not luck, man. Yeah. Like, at all. I was, at all. No, at all. So – I can't come up here and complain about anything because I have no right because I made some money, which people don't realize. It helps out a lot, trust me. It makes life a lot easier, but it doesn't solve all your problems. It doesn't. And it goes faster than you can think. And we'll have a whole episode on how much money people really make when you talk about, I gave, you know how much money I gave in my career? Every 49% of every one of my checks was gone before I even got it. 49%. Forty-nine percent, cool. and I'm looking at that shit going to fund um, programs for people who need it, which I fully agree with. But then I gotta watch people take advantage and 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 work the system on my money. I'm like, what? You know what? The, but could I say that? I don't know. I couldn't say that. I could not say that. Hey, over here, you can say what the fuck you want to say, man. So being able to know that that you can actually, someone's calling you to ask how you're doing and, and for to them to actually want to know your problems, right? Yes, and not at the end of the conversation, act like they were listening to you just so they can fucking call, so they can give you the real life when they were calling because yeah. their car payment's about to go on or whatever. Like, yeah. that's a big thing, right? To be able to, so, so it, again, having this program like this is, is amazing. So, I have they're no calling, idea. They're, they're calling you. The, the, the good thing about that is they don't need nothing from you. They're calling you a, 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 in good spirits. And look at, just look at this. I mean, I brought it over here. Look at this. Are you kidding me? They sent me a birthday card. That's fire. My, my mom and dad didn't even fucking call me on my birthday. And the <laughs> Oakland Raiders, look at the Oakland Raiders, who I haven't been in since 2007. Send me a birthday card. That is fuck. Hey, that's crazy. So, Stu just, just made this the greatest live that YouTube ever seen in life, right now. <laughs> <laughs> Get this. I moved back to Purdue, right? I moved back here. I donated two hundred fifty thousand dollars to their to their program as an alumnus. One, because that's if you want the big stadiums, that's what you need to do as an alumnus, right? Yeah. Two. Two, so that you know what? When I call this coach over here, just fucking call me back, man. I have not heard from them. And I live, I live 400 meters from the stadium. A place to where I'm considered one of the best players to ever play. Yeah. Right? And I donated. Do you think I would get anything like this? I haven't played with these guys in 18 fucking years. And I wasn't even, I was an okay player, but it's like, Anyways, let me read it. And, no, no, no. First, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. Before you read that, do all that. Not stop doing all that fucking bullshit. Oh, birthday card. I fucking dude. But stop doing that shit, man. I, I was an okay player. Blah blah blah. Look, there's different circumstances that that happen with with this shit. No, I mean, Stu, we loved you as a Raider, brother, and now getting to know you as a human being off the field, we love you even more. And the great thing that we're seeing now is you're showing us why we love our team that much by showing us the birthday cards, by the invites. You're showing the nation so it's, much more of why we love the team in the first place. It, you, it, it, it's a very unique fan. Um, not even it's a very unique family almost. I mean, it's. it's, it's it I'm just telling you, this, this, this not, there's nothing like. I mean, maybe. What Jerry Jones did with Dallas, maybe there's something going on there, and him and Al were similar in some stuff a little bit. But there's no, they don't give, a, people don't give a fuck. No. People don't give a fuck at all. But before you on this, them moving, I understand why, because free agency, you need those facilities and you need that, that market where guys are going to come here. Because these, 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 these facilities, they're, they're, when I started bouncing around to other teams, it was like, we had we brought in like caterers with like frying pans to cook food. These places have like a whole facility of a full time cook making prime rim at any time, 
And the waiters, dude, like, if you didn't eat from 11.30 to, to 12.30, they pack the food up and go. You don't get the chance to eat. Like, it's like, it's like middle school type shit, dude. You know what I'm saying? Shit. Horrible. And the stadium, again, the stadium's falling apart. So when you, I mean, you know, Al tried, man. Al tried to find an area and he tried to build something, but you can't do it, man. Like, you got it. You got it. Dude, it's, it's about the free agency market, man. Yeah. Dude, you got it. It's and, a recruiting no, trip. Takes, no taxes. Um, who doesn't oh. want to go to Vegas? Dude, I already talked about that, man. Yeah. Oh, shit. We just lost, bro. We just lost, bro. We just lost, bro. I know he'll be, I know he'll definitely pull back up. His phone must have died. Bro, this was a great fucking interview, man. Oh my god. Shout out to my brother Stu, man. This is so fire. Yes, R Vega. I'm definitely gonna talk to our brother, man. I'm I, I, look, he's brand new to this stuff, so we're gonna get it right. There goes Stu. He's right back. We right back in the what, building. Was that me? Yeah, it was you. What the hell? No, you're good, brother. You're good. You're good. All right. So I guess that my phone is too, like my phone's getting tired. I guess. No, no, I, you're good. I, I want you to read that real quick because I know we're two hours in. Read that, and then I want to uh, do our outro. But hey, the nation wants this. Hey, we have to do this more often, brother. This was great. I just want you guys to know to have the fan support. You you realize that 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 makes and breaks. Like as players. We want you guys. We're out there playing for you guys. I'm, I'm just, I'm just telling you that. Like, I want you to know that. I know for me, the fans, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a unique relationship, and we, we, I take it serious. I take it very serious, man. It's a, it's a, to know that the fans have your, like, honestly, guys commit suicide because they feel like they let the fans down. I mean, that's how serious it is. So, you guys having the fan base that we have and the relationships of that. It's it's a privilege, honestly, for me to get back and talk to you guys and hear this stuff. And again, dude, I dude, I, I this shit about oh, dude, you know, uh, you know, watch out for this and don't give people this, dude. I put my I fucking put my cell phone number up. I don't give. Well, really, why put your cell phone number out? Like, really, people aren't just gonna like people aren't just gonna call you, man. I mean, come on, dude. Like, I want people to. But let me tell you something. In today's world, being like that, brother, you're going to win. Uh, people love people that are real. And I'm telling you now, this look it, man. This show it's pretty simple. Here. It's pretty simple. And here's the other thing I don't do. Don't buy over spilled milk, man. I might have so much shit going on, you know, that's going on, but I'm not gonna let something that negative happened yesterday affect this conversation right here, dude. Like, if you think I'm just telling you, man. Positive thinking, and we'll talk about that. If you know, in your head, I'm gonna make a play. I'm gonna make a play. Positive thinking, dude, is everything, man. It's and that's, that's something I had to learn to do. So I'm always gonna be, I'm always in a good mood. I'll bitch about, about shit, but it'll be it'll be more of me. To, maybe you know what? If I talk about this negative aspect and how I handled it, maybe that'll help someone else that's going through that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but we, we talked about it off on the phone, off camera. Um, I, we're we're going to do a, ment a mental health Monday as well. I want you to come on. Oh, man. It's, it's serious. Yeah, want, yeah. Mental health in America gets so overlooked, man. And it's it's with, with veterans of war and, you know, this whole stuff with the Olympics now with, with the gymnasts. And yes. it's unfortunate because it, it, if you see me, okay, I stay in shape. Because if, if I don't stay in shape, my body will deteriorate. And my joints, I mean, my body's trashed. I have to do a little bit. So I feel I'm in pretty good shape, right? Mm -hmm. I can still speak. But what goes on in my head and, and what I have to do to even make this, I, I almost wanted to cancel on you four or five times because the anxiety of it, it it's almost overwhelming. It makes me want to throw up. But yeah. you know what I do? I go, no one gives a fuck about that. I push through it. And I perform. You know what I'm saying? And now, once I get into it, I'm good. So, but, but hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But you found the right one because I actually do give a fuck about that, and I want to talk to you about that. I, I like, like for somebody that deals with that, brother, I deal with that every day. So, you were dealing with that same anxiety. 
I was dealing with the same shit. Remember, remember the, time that changed, the time that changed and, and some other yeah. shit? I, I was dealing with family shit and then I was like, oh shit. Like, so understand this, brother. We look, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest. Like you said, you're an open book. I'm an open book like a motherfucker. If if I talk, if I talk to someone, I bring you on, I'm invested in the person, not just yeah. the player, not just yeah. the player, not none of that. So, brother, anytime you're going through some shit, I don't care if it's personal. Call me, hey, Graf, hey, I'm going through some shit. Because I'll do the same thing with you, brother. I promise you that. You know what I mean? So I, I yeah, just, I, I, it's, it's real over here, brother. It's real. You know what I mean? I, and I, I appreciate that very much. But the, the whole thing with mental illness is it, it's so hard because, and also with mental illness, when you start telling people, don't you feel like while you're telling them this stuff, they're going, yeah, right, dude. Like, no one really believes you. Because if you have a, a if you lost your legs or if you, you know, you have MS or if you have, um, uh, you know, uh, whatever, any of these diseases where it affects the outward appearance, people see that and, and oh, you know, oh, I feel so bad. That, but mental, get over it, motherfucker. Like, grow up. Like, stop complaining about shit. You know what I mean? It's like, how would you feel if you haven't slept in five or six days because of the nightmares in your back and, and, and in your head you've got a million things going on and, um, it's just, I want to go out, I, I've been dealing with it for 10 years. Um, it takes time through medication and therapy and psychiatry and just talking to people, man, just yes. talking. Yes. But people are so terrified to either admit that they made a mistake or show a weakness because other people, you know why? And I know why they are that way, because there are some times when people would say, open up to me, even my wife. And I'd open up to her a little bit, and guess what? We get in an argument, and that shit gets right back. I'm like, well, I'm not going to tell you anything because you're going to use it against me. And that's a lot of times what will happen. When you, when you show a weakness, typically people try to exploit it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So people don't go, oh, fuck that. Oh, what you mean? I don't, I, I, dude, I don't do none of that shit. It's like, okay, man. All right, dude. Whatever, dude. You know? So I, I just want you to know, for somebody, some, for somebody that's dealt with PTSD, uh, dealt with uh, depression and anxiety my entire life, brother. Trust me, I, I, I trust me. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't strap up. I didn't strap up and, and hit motherfuckers for a living. But um, I've been through some shit. I have a story to tell. And if you ever want to just sit down and talk about it, brother, I am here. Hey, fuck the football shit. We can push that shit to the side. You know what I learned through this, this disability process when when my my lawyer talking about PTSD. Now I, I just thought I always thought PTSD was coming from war where you're seeing um, people's heads explode and like these noises and stuff like that, right? And that was where you're, where you're having like those, that, that, those weird thoughts. They said, no, not, my uh, therapist said, no, it's when your brain is under such amount of stress. So she's like, Stuart, you didn't even realize it because you were under stress basically your whole life, but it was, that was, that was normal for you. But that's not how normal it should be. So I was like, oh, shit. See, I, th I thought PTSD was like I had to see something, like someone get murdered and then that in my vision. I said, like, you know, it's, it's, it's the stress, like military, it's the stress of every day of someone yelling at you. And, you know, in the NFL, someone's going to take your job and, and, the, and the, the armed forces, you're dying, you're sure you're gonna get, you could get killed. You know what I'm saying? So just being like a gymnast. It, those gymnasts, man, they are you, like 20 hours a day. Like, yeah. That constant stress, man, like that fucks your brain up. So I, I try to, I try to as much as I, I what I try to do is I, I try to set the mood. I try to get that stuff out first. So whoever's on here goes, oh shit, he just said, like, he brought that up. So now I feel comfortable if I were to say something, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, dude, I've been arrested. Um, I, you know, when this whole thing happened with my brain changing, uh, some of the drinking habits I, I had changed. So I've been, I've been to treatment. I've been to um, Betty Ford Hazleton out in Circle City, Minnesota, which is the mecca of treatment. So I know the whole AA program, NA program. Um, I went to AA meetings. Like, I've been to drug meetings. I've been, you know, I've, I, it's. Not at all. Again, I, yeah, I've experienced stuff. You know what I'm saying? And like, that's the first thing I always say is, man, listen, dude. I don't expect anyone to be perfect. I'm, I make a million mistakes a day because I don't want to ever, how can I, how can I tell you 
not to do something if I've done that before. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or, or, or how can I tell you, well, listen, hey, in that situation, you should have done this. And it's like, well, you know what? I wasn't in your situation. So how can I, how can I honestly tell you what you should have done? For me, I might say this. I might go, yeah. well, you know, I actually, I kind of experienced something like that myself. This was a situation I went through. This is how I handle it. And, you know, this is, this is you know, I think it worked for me. But, again, there's a million ways to skin a cat, right? So when someone tells you this is what you should be doing and it's not a coach or a teacher, that, well, not even – fuck teachers nowadays because I don't know what their shit is. But if it's not somebody that you really respect and you're, you're giving them the ability to tell you that, yeah. no one should be ever saying that to you, ever. Stu, your, your stock just went through the roof right now, brother. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, man. I know. <laughs> you're still well, going through the fucking roof. Dude, you, can, you, can, you can tell I've been to therapy. Like, I, I'm like a therapist, dude. Like, I've I know, been through therapy. Been, I, look, look, what's funny is I've been there. I've been to AA. Um, I've done all that. I, bro, uh, yeah. I've seen, I've seen people get killed in front of me where PTSD yeah. really fucked with me. Um, I've lost probably about 60, 70 people in my life uh, to yeah. murder, uh, yeah. uh, 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 killing themselves cancer it's a lot of shit you know what i mean so close people not just people who are like oh i knew that person oh so and so um so it's, it's tough and that's why yeah. I, I love having these conversations because people need to understand that we're all human beings at the end of the day yes you were an nfl football player you worked your ass off your whole life while i was out doing dumb shit running the streets and having fun and probably fucking some females and doing some shit <laughs> Hey, you were in the gym. You were in the gym. You were working out. I mean, you might well, be fucking a little bit too. You might be fucking a little bit too. Funny, <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny you say that, though, because literally when I was done at 31, when I knew it was over with, and I, that's another story of how I knew it was over with, I was basically like, so you know when you're in high school and you graduate and you're under your parents' rule and whatever, and then you go off to college and you get to experience this and that and you don't have to really account for anything. Yeah. I'm 31, 32 years old. I'm basically a high school kid that just got to college and now I can try a bunch of shit. And I got a credit card that never says no. So like, it was, it was like, it was, I was like, I'm going to try out some stuff. I'm going to experience some stuff. I'm going to do some stuff. And you know, so that's the thing too that gets screwed up is you see these grown men who are these professionals and then all of a sudden you're done. And you, you've only grown up in that football environment, and you cannot apply anything you learned in that environment to, to corporate America or real life. So you're like a little kid, and you're like, well, the, you know, we're kind of working in reverse. Like, you got all the dumb shit out of your system when you were, like, 21, and now you're a professional. Yeah. We were a professional, and then now we're trying to, like, oh, well, shit, I get to, you mean I can stay out all night, and I can go do this, and, you know, I'm not going to get fined for it, and I don't have to wake up practice, but see, for me, and that's another reason why I always had respect from the players is because I grew up in a blue collar town, man. I drank beer since I was 14 years old. I never did it before games. After games, I, I was always pride myself on being the one who could drink the most, stay up the latest, and then be the one that's up in the morning and balling out at practice. And that, I get a lot of respect from players that when you go out with them, and there's something about being able to drink with the man and party and then to get up the next day and both of you look at each other going, I know you feel like shit right now. And that just kind of smile. <laughs> I got some stories of me and Cooper, dude. Man, me hey, and Gerard wait, wait, Cooper, bro. Hey, look, I know. Real quick, quick, my last thing before the letter. I want to say this, brother. I went into this feeling like this was going to be a great interview. Um, I feel like I found a brother, man. And I, I, I'm very excited about building with you, brother. And um. If you have anything going on with mental health or anything, I don't even mean just like like mentally. I mean like any foundations that you're into or anything. I would love. I do. I, I do. I do. I do have a. Uh, I do have a foundation I was really big into. It, it's based in Saginaw Stew's Crew Foundation. Uh, it focuses on on youth, health, athleticism. We do like shop with a jack event during Christmas, and I've the probably the last six years. I just I just with my kids and my stuff going on. I just haven't. I haven't really focused on it, but I do eventually want to get back to that somehow. 
so I do have that let's, stuff. Let's but, talk about it behind the scenes because yeah, I know, yeah. I know our, I know our guys over here. Everybody in this chat would love to be a part of that. So let, let's let's for sure build. Let's read this this legendary letter. Everybody's asking for it. Let's read the legendary letter. And here's the thing too is, I get it from my grandma and my dad. I'm I'm a sociopath. Okay, like. I don't really, I don't really have a whole lot of like remorse, like, or, or like, uh, I don't really get emotional too much with stuff. I don't get too excited. I don't get too low. Um, someone dies, they die. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so this right here though, it, 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 it got me emotional and you saw me, if I get emotional, like I, 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 I'm not trying to act like I'm some hard ass. I just. And when you have brain injuries, like, you know, serial killers, like they have brain injuries, right? You like, you lose that, that empathy thing type yeah. of thing. I don't want to say I'm a serial killer, but I really don't give a fuck sometimes about this shit. Like, I, you know, I just, whatever. Yeah, but then, Stu is not going to go kill nobody, bro. Stu's not going <laughs> to kill anybody. We're, we're good. We're good. We're all right. And like you mess with my kids and my wife. I mean, other than that, I mean, you're good. <laughs> all right. And first of all, shout out to my wife, Chrissy. We've been married for 20 years. We have four beautiful children. Beautiful. Beautiful. And as we go on, you'll see my kids. Dude, tonight, you don't see my dog. Usually my dogs are running around here shit and barking, and I'm yelling, and my kids are throwing stuff. So, But tonight, I'm like, guys, usually, this is my first time doing it. Usually, my twin sounds would have ran through a few times, too. So I get it, brother. All right. So, but this, again, this, I was like, wow. This actually was like, it touched, it touched me. So, it says, Hold on, let me just wet my whistle here. <laughs> okay, it says, <clears throat> it says, Dear Stuart, as you know, we are embarking on a historic time for the Raiders organization. Our relocation to Las Vegas has given me the opportunity to honor all Raiders alumni in a special way. The Raiders, uh, no, we don't, wait, wait, is that it? Okay, the Raiders Foundation <laughs> well, there's one paragraph where it just, it's, it's, I don't need to read it, it's not anything important, but this one is. The Raiders Foundation developed the Raiders Legacy Brick Program, which allows for professionalized bricks to be placed at Allegiant, uh, Allegiant, Allegiant, Allegiant Stadium. As a token of my appreciation, I'm gifting each Raiders alumni with a legacy brick that will be installed at the stadium this summer. The most valuable, this is the part right here, dude, that's just fucking awesome. The most valuable asset the Raiders have is its alumni. Your commitment to excellence laid the foundation for our organization's success both on and off the field. As part of the Raiders family, you continue to make us proud. With your dedication to each other, the organization, and the community, I look forward to seeing you in Las Vegas. Once a Raider, always a Raider, Mark Davis. So, I'll show you the bricks, dude. So, look at what we got. Fire, man. So, th this is like a, it came in a, this little stand right here. So, it comes in this. But this is the brick. Oh, my God. Ah, let's go, Stu. Yep. And then it's got, it's got this in there, too. Let's so go. So these bricks, these bricks lead up to the stadium, right? Yeah, yeah I, I've been there. I've been there a few times. So if you look, too, it doesn't say Super Bowls or starts. It just says number 30, Stuart Swagger. So I asked the alumni board, I said, how do you, how do you, how did Mark pick who, who's a right? Because obviously guys come in for one week and leave, and I'm like, how, how does he, did, you know, predicate if you're a Raider or not, right? This is, did, you know how he decides on if you're a Raider or not? If you played one play in a Raider's uniform, you are a Raider for the rest of your life. One play. I was like, holy shit, man. Well, thank God A.B. never played one, um, you know, uh, 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 there's a few other guys that I look at like, oh, you know, Randy Moss never wanted to be there, but. Here's the deal. 
I got good stories about Randy Moss. I was, I want, I want to talk about that whole thing. Save them, save them. I, no, no I know, I, no, I know, I know. Yeah, no, no, we're, we're gonna do a whole Randy Moss episode. That would be. Fun. But dude, I'm thinking, dude, this, I could have a brick next to freaking Bo Jackson or Holly Long or Willie Brown or like, dude, like, are you serious? You know why? Like, I that's still, crazy, man. Because you worked your ass off since a kid. And you made it to the NFL, and you played for the greatest organization of all time, man. That's because that's I mean. the thing. I, I when I was with some other teams, you should see when they cut you what they fucking do, dude. Like you're like, God damn, like those mother, they're cold. What it's all for you, like having them say like you're our greatest asset, and this and that, and you're like. I thought I was the worst fucking person that was even coming through that place, man. You, I, I thought, I thought like I ruined that stuff like looking for now, you know. So it's just I'm just like that. It's they're redefining, like, and for these young guys too to have the alumni come back. Yeah, I don't know if they even give a shit because they don't care about. Last thing about Willie Brown, and this this carried me. These new kids, maybe for Oakland, they do. But the very first meeting as rookies, before we did anything, mm-hmm. Willie Brown was like our go-to guy, right? And he called us into the Raiders uh, team room or whatever. It was just, just the, you know, the eight of us or whatever, ten of us. And he was on stage and he had like one of the, like the, the yearbooks or whatever you have, like the history or whatever, you know? Yeah, Of yeah. the Raiders, like three uh-huh. Super Bowls, trophies on Hell it. Yeah. He yeah. said, guys, he said, Here's the thing. First thing you guys do before you playbook, whatever, he said, you study the history of the Oakland Raiders. You know the guys that came before you. One, because they're going to be coming around, you're going to see these guys, okay? And you go pay your respects to them, okay? Secondly, you need to know what these guys did. What type, you know, how, what type of stats and how hard they had to work and how many interceptions, how many games they needed to start, what they, you know, what they had to do to win a Super Bowl. Yeah. You need to know that so you can, so then you can have, okay, I kind of have an idea of where I need to go now. But I'm thinking the worst thing I can imagine, fucking Jack Tatum, is, and could you see these guys? They're older. Yeah, right? You don't know who's who. And like, can you imagine being Jack Tatum and walking up? And I, I'm a safety, and I don't even acknowledge him. Because <laughs> that, that, that shit happens at Purdue. That, and, I, and here's the thing. I'm a nice guy, but don't, dude, I, I have some great stories of where I've, I've, I've pulled some motherfuckers' cards real quick. Like, Talk oh, you don't shit. know who the fuck? Yeah, like, oh, oh, me? Let me tell you who I am, motherfucker. I'm but a that, interception. Get the, yeah, talk that shit. But that's the thing, though. Al Davis set the things real straight right away. He said, you got, listen, kids, you know the guys that paid the dues so that you have this facility and you have an NFLPA and you have a retirement and you're able to have these huge contracts. Know these motherfuckers because they know who you are. They know who you are and they're watching you. And it's like, wow. So... I'm thinking and, like and they know they know what Al expects out of every one of y'all. That's the thing. So you, so let me think this. So you don't think on Sunday I was going, man, I don't want I don't want to I don't want to disappoint Jack Tatum. I don't want to disappoint George Atkinson. So I'm gonna go out there and try to make those like you want to make those dudes proud. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You oh, want those yeah. guys to be proud of you because now being older and talking to some of the alumni, like for instance, Rod Woodson and Jim Everett and Chris Dishman for Purdue, they're like Dude, I'm excited I put my jersey on. I watch, like, they're fans. Like, you don't think that those guys are even yeah. associated anymore. Like, they're, they're, like, dude, we're all football fans. Yeah. Like, they're watching you, like, going, who the fuck is, who, who is this guy, man? Like, this guy's a clown out there wearing a jersey I used to wear. Like, hell no. I want them to be like, damn, that dude is out there. That dude's doing his thing. And then whenever I see I go up to them. Mr. Mr. Tatum, it's a pleasure to meet you, man. You, you at Ohio State, you know, a Big Ten boy, like, dude, like, that's the thing. Like, I, I pay respect, man, because some guys, they act like they just, they, if, it's, if it's not in front of their face or it doesn't have anything to do with them, they don't give a fuck. 
and they're, they're just clueless. They have no idea. They have no idea. But Willie Brown said that, along with my older brothers and stuff. But when Willie Brown said that, that that really stuck with me. And that's the thing. I think I've had a couple times where I've had some guy actually come up to me and say, "Hey, Stuart, nice to meet you." Well, let me, let me ask a question. So I know you spent some, like a, a little bit of time. Uh, with the Redskins, with the Giants, with Detroit. Redskins, Giants, and Lions, yeah. Yeah. So, so was there any type of that kind of brotherhood within any of them organizations that you felt like within the Raiders? Washington, from top to bottom, fucking prick, asshole, white-collar, fucking arrogant motherfuckers, dude. All of them. From the coaches. To the, to, to the equipment, to the trainers, right? <laughs> and the year before, or two years before, we went to Washington and we beat the fuck out of those guys, right? Yeah. And I'm looking at these coaches. Uh, besides, besides there, was, there was three safeties. I can't remember their names. One was a white guy, a little dude that was a Division two guy that had no right even playing, but he started for them. The rest but, of I uh, uh, can't remember his name now. But, dude, I couldn't believe it. When I went from Oakland and to these guys, I'm like, am I like, are you, like you, you guys aren't that fucking good. Like what, like even, even fucking Randall's ass, right? So my, Antoine Randall, who I played against in the Big Ten two years in a row, picked him off three times, twice, my freshman year to win oh, the Big Ten. Okay, yeah. I want to play, I'm going to show you, because I, I pick guys up. Like I play, I respect what respect do. There's a play where I come up one on one title with Randall I was known was doing as a fre- as a freshman or even as a senior. I went to like this and he went like this and I'm like, okay, motherfucker, I see how it is, right? <laughs> so I go to Wa- I go to Washington and I'm thinking any guy I played against with, dude, even if I don't know him, we're cool because again, when you play against a tough motherfucker like, yeah, yo, bro, like I'm glad you're on my team, right? And I was, like, excited to be like, oh, cool, I think I have a relationship with Randall. Because I respect his game, and he, I know he knows who I am. I know that. Yeah, straight and up. And he acted like, he acted like he was a big shot. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I'm like, first of all, you're little as hell. I don't give a fuck who you are. I'll beat your ass to begin with. That's, I mean, first of all, that's how it goes down. Oh! Like, <laughs> but Washington was terrible. I went to New York. Uh, so I got released from Washington, which I'll tell you that story. I go to New York, so I'm thinking, NFC East, they had just won the Super Bowl. I'm like, I can only imagine how bad these guys are going to be, right? Yeah. Complete opposite. They were cool as fuck, dude. Tom, Co- Tom Coughlin, or was it Tom Coughlin, yeah. right, their coach? The, you know, um, if you're earlier on time, if you're on time, you're late, and if you're late, you're forgotten. Like, he, he ran that shit like a good program, right? Dude, from top to bottom, like, those dudes were cool as hell, man. Like, That's fine. Eli Manning's a little weird. I, he's, I, I went to the Playboy American thing with him. He's kind of weird. But, dude, like, I'm, they were, like, super cool. Like, super, super cool. Then I went to Detroit, and Detroit was just a mess at that time, man. It was just whatever. But um, how, did feel, how did it feel going home, though? It was cool. It was really cool. And I'll, talk, I'll walk through that and – Again, the, 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 the coaches that the next year that came in and I had a couple injuries and, and, and Jim Schwartz, you know, Jim Schwartz, Yeah. he, he came from Tennessee's defense yeah. and he comes into Detroit. Yeah. He's one of those guys. He, he walk, he's going to walk in the hippie toes. He's one of those guys. And he, and he had, he had a tribal tattoo around his ankle. And I'm going, this motherfucker here. I I'd I, I slap his fucking glasses off his face if I saw him right now. He just, just a oh dude, just just. Hey, no, no, I, want to, I want to save that one. We're gonna save it. Hey, real quick, man. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Um, everybody, yeah. everybody's in love with our brother Stu, man. Um, I'm in love with all you. Oh, man, look, 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 I'm just here, man. I'm just here, man. Um, go follow my brother. I put his um his Instagram in the thread. Go follow please. him as well. Yeah, please, guys. 
just just to have a basis so you really know my background and how I am and what got me to where I am, please go to the Saginaw Sports Hall of Fame. There's a six-minute little thing that talks about my history. My coach talk, my, my track coach talks on there. My, my football coach talks on there. My dad talks and one of my brothers talks. And then it follows with my induction speech. It's, it'll, it's, a 20, it's 25 minutes all together with both of those. That way it, it allows me so that I don't have to go back to that. But it, it'll, it's, a, it's, it's, it's me. You'll understand everything where I come from, dude. I highly encourage you guys. You just got 50 new subscribers. Funny. Everybody go subscribe yeah. more to the channel. To the channel. Go subscribe. Go subscribe. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm, upload, I'm uploading more stuff, like, all the time, dude. Like, behind the scenes, like, really cool Raider stuff. And actually, so, you know, this weekend, <clears throat> I'm, I'm coming there Sunday. Um, I'm leaving Thursday. But I'm actually bringing a close friend of mine who has a production company, and we're doing a. He's gonna be he's gonna be filming the entire thing, one for the memories for me, and two so I can show my family and everything like that. So I'm really really pumped to be able to go out there and see everything and document it. So I will personally I want to show some of that stuff as well. It's gonna be I want to like talk to. Um, I'm going to meet up with Justin Fargus and Rod Woodson and, you know, Justin Fargus' dad, who I love, was a, was a fan of mine, you know, Huggy Bear is out there. And, Huggy Bear, come on. Yeah. I want to I wanna actually interview, because I like doing interviews, is what I did for three years here at, at um, uh, in Lafayette, but I want to get some of the old heads and talk, because there's guys from the 60s that are coming, dude. So I want to sit and just say, dude, just how was it back then, bro? Like, it's crazy. It, they'll tell you some crazy stories. So I hopefully we'll put in some of that stuff on my YouTube page as well. And um, First of all, go out there. Oh, I already read this. I'm good. I, was, I still have to read this, don't I? But I already read it. Go out there, do all that, but also, man, have fun. Take it all in. You oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, 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 I just said, you know what? I'm going to do it. And there's <laughs> I booked my flight a week ago. It's probably been six or seven times where I'm not going to go. I, I, I don't want to go. I just, oh, it's going to be packing and um, going out there. and uh, But I'm going to do it. Don't, gonna do don't it. overthink it. Go have a good time, man. Look, look, go go to the team that drafted you, that believed in you. From oh, the yeah. And, and, go have a, and go have a ball, man. Hey, real quick, man. Two and a half hours in. Uh, my wife's going to kill me. I love you, brother. I appreciate you so much for this, man. Um, hey, so what, does this? Or do you what? Do you, what do you do with this then? Is it, it goes it, straight to YouTube? I'm gonna send it to you. So this will be the whole thing. Yeah, everything will be on YouTube, and I can share it on mine. You can do all that, and I'll I'll, I'll I'll figure out a way. Actually, there is a way. I'll, I'll download it and send it to you, so you can upload it on your channel as well. Awesome, cool. That'd be great, dude. That'd be awesome. No, most and anything that we do on here, I will make sure to send it your way, and you can do it as well because. Over here, I don't think you understand. Like we, this is where. Where, we where are you? I, 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 forgive me. Where Where are you at? Born and raised in Northern California. I live in Dallas now. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 Yeah, but um, man, brother, I appreciate you. Fire ass show, man. Um, a great man, great guy. Appreciate you, brother. I'm gonna call you. Um, when are you free? When When do you get back? You said Thursday. Um, I leave Sunday. I'll be back Thursday. I'm gonna call you Friday, dude. You can call me or or a lot of times texting. Texting is good, and then I'll see it, and then we can set up a time. I no, never answer my phone, text, dude. I'm just gonna text while you're out there and just say how how's everything going, brother. Absolutely, no, no, I, I, no, no. I, I want you to check in, dude. I'm sending you pictures and all that stuff. There we go, my bro, I, I'm I'm gonna upload them and show people, man. So there God we go. Damn it. I'm glad the light, I'm pissed the light went off, man. You can't see my baby blues. <laughs> my brother, man, I appreciate you. We're about to get out of here, man. Love you, brother. Have a great night, man. Thank you. Stuart. Later, nation. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Raiders, my brother. Yes, sir.